Three seconds, two seconds, one to Carrington. She didn't get it off in time, but she does put it down. Welcome to Morris Sussex Sports, the only place that covers high school sports in Morris, Sussex, and parts of Warren County. While other news outlets are shutting their doors, Morris Sussex Sports continues to grow. Our content makes you feel good. Whether it's a video of that winning goal, a photograph of that unbelievable moment, or a special interest story about hope, about love, about community. We have one of the best internship programs for high school and college age students. We find out what their interests are, what they're passionate about, and we give them a real world experience in sports journalism and broadcasting. And he scores! While Morris Sussex Sports continues to grow and provide the best content available in high school sports, we know we can't do it without you, our loyal audience. We value kids, their education, their creativity, and believe their future is rooted in what we, as a community, put into them. Was Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Mendham High School for tonight's matchup between the Mendham Minutemen and the St. Peter's Prep Marauders. We had the JV game live earlier. It was a great game. 9-7 to seven victory for Mendham. But now we move to varsity, the upper echelon of the games here tonight. Uh, Mendham comes into the game at 2-3 and three with their last game being a 10-3 loss against Caldwell at home. And St. Peter's Prep, they are 1-3, and three, and their last game was their first one of the season, 13-6 to six against Morristown Beard at home. My broadcast colleague today is a very special guest, a former coach of St. Peter's Prep uh, and a former uh, lacrosse athlete in this area himself, Joe DiPompeo. So, Coach Joe, um, got great players on either side. He's one of those things where the record says nothing. Amazing talent either side, uh, regardless of the, both teams being under 500. What do we got from both teams do you, do you see, starting with Mendham? Okay, well, Mendham, we're looking at uh, Kevin Sansone on attack, big lefty whose uh, dad was just up here helping me out for the JV game. And George Serafin, the captain, we'll uh, talk a little bit more about him later. I, uh, I played with two of his uncles and know his father. And uh, Will Trinkoff, senior attack, also a captain. And uh, there's a, a sophomore to keep an eye out for. He was voted top freshman in 2018 by NewJersey.com. That's Justin Beimfor. He is a force out there, probably one of the better players on the entire team. Now, as for St. Peter's Prep, got a lot of young talent on the team, lost a lot of seniors last year. Kristen Delarocco is their highest goal scorer, 5'10 attackman. Uh, he scored his 100th goal last game against uh, Morris, Morristown Beard as part of a hat trick, and he was first, uh, first team all-conference last year. Also, Robbie McDonough, senior midi, 5'11. He's the best midi dodger they got. He can shoot on the run with either hand and with an incredibly hard shot. And on defense, uh, Tracy Bauer, 6'1", senior, number four. He has a huge body, plays well with his hips, and has incredible footwork. And his footwork is going to be key here tonight because of the fact that the turf is a little bit wet. It did rain a little bit before the game. It rained during uh, the JV game. And it may sprinkle a little bit later. What effect do you think this is going to have on the way that the players play the game from well, each Well, it, it looks like the weather is clearing up now. Um, Certainly, certainly having a wet stick and wet gloves slows everything down, uh, but uh, I, th I think uh, things should dry out sometime in the first quarter. If we don't have any more rain, things should be uh, normal by, uh, by sometime in the first quarter. Now, you, now, now, we did do a game one time in the rain before. It was Paquanic and Jefferson last year. It was torrential downpour. What, what is the advice, just, just for, the sake of, for the sake of everything, what is the advice you give to your players when they're playing in weather like the rain, like torrential downpour rain? It's just a little harder to handle the stick, and, and the ball comes off it a little differently. You typically can't get as hard, hard a shot off, and um, your gloves get waterlogged, making every, makes everything a little heavier. So um, you, just, you just have to slow it down a bit. If you, if you try to do something you can, you can do with everything dry, it might not happen the way you expect it to. Oh, yeah, of course. They slip off the stick or anything like that. So captain's meeting in the center. We are about to get started here. 
with tonight's matchup here. Our first live varsity broadcast of the spring season for Morris Sussex Sports, and there is plenty, plenty more to come. We got softball coming up, we got baseball coming up, a lot, a lot of stuff to give to you because we want to bring the best coverage possible in Morris and Sussex counties. Now tell tell them a little bit about your your coaching career before we get started because you have it you're oh, repping your sure. your college here Stevens uh, Stevens uh, lacrosse here uh, with your jacket you have on right here. Uh, yes, I, I actually that this would be a good time to, to talk about George Serafin. Um, George will, George is committed to to Stevens and he will be the fourth Serafin to play there. <laughs> His uh, father George played there, graduated in 1987. Uh, I know him a little bit from alumni games and other things, but. Uh, I played with uh, two of his uncles. Um, Mark was uh, a year or two older than me, and Kevin was a year or two younger than me. And um, I played with both of them, and he'll be, he'll be the fourth one uh, there. Uh, my, my coaching career, um, I, uh, I coached St. Peter's Prep in 1999, which was uh, 20 years ago this season, uh, while I was in grad school, and coached the program to its first win, yeah. which uh, nice. the anniversary of that's coming up in uh, about two weeks was a fantastic experience. The, this program was started by my friend Pat Drennan for two years and then uh, the third year they took a step back. Uh, it was not very organized but we uh, we turned that around and won uh, four or five games. It was a great experience for the seniors to um, to go out with some wins and um, that was the end of my career for a while because uh, life and uh, the job took over but uh, I've been coaching youth for uh, several years now. I coached the fourth graders of Mountain Lakes this year. And um, what that's is it. it. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, what is the difference for you, do you think, between your coaching style for, you know, kids uh, that are of this age and kids that are up-and-comers going up to hopefully play at the higher level uh, eventually, especially in the Mountain Lakes, because that's a breeding ground. It is. The, I mean, the the younger kids, you need to spend a lot of time uh, on fundamentals, but, but also um, uh, just... Uh, taking care of them as kids uh you know once you get to high school and, and college it's uh then you just coach lacrosse but when they're younger there's a, a lot a lot more you have to do than coach lacrosse so. right you gotta be a mentor you gotta well i mean you gotta do that for for them too but they're more obviously they have a lot more to learn when they're younger as everybody does uh about lacrosse and life i guess you could say <laughs> team's still practicing out here giving them a little yeah, bit we're of, ready to go here on the, yeah, we're, to we're ready to go here <laughs> we're ready to go too we have been told that the game is going to start at about 6.30. It's 6.27 Eastern Daylight Time right now. And a whistle is blown, so hopefully that means that the game is going to, be, uh, going to begin because we are very excited to be here for this game. As was alluded to in the earlier broadcast, these two teams have had a, uh, a somewhat of a rivalry in, um, in uh, lacrosse over the past few years. So another installment today, a good enough uh, um, conglomerate of students has made their way out from uh, from Mendham today. But first of all, a word from our sponsors, Prospects Baseball and Softball Academy. And Gizzy Productions, video production and photography, weddings, sports, commercials, product, media, live streaming, drone footage, anything you need, Gizzy is the guy for you. Call 973-919-7005 or visit gizzyproductions.com or email Matt Gizzy at Matthew at gizzyproductions.com. And Mendham Lacrosse would like to thank everybody for, uh, thank everyone listed on the screen for their sponsorship. Platinum and Gold Level sponsors, Robert Stoll's House Purchasing Group, the Regan Family, the Trinkoff Waddick Group of Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, the Weeks Family, Top Safety Products, Bailey Funeral Home, Chester Bagel, Salerno Duane Auto Group. They thank all of you for your incredible support to help us be here today. So we thank uh, you ourselves as well. Teams have made their way to the sideline, two officials in the center. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank my good uh, old friend George Muha for the opportunity to do this. Yes. Thank you, George. Yes. He gets us the gigs and we show up. <laughs> the lights are actually, it is, it is raining a little bit. Uh, you can see up there with the, uh, the, the new, newly installed lights just this year here at, uh, at Mendham High School. Their first uh, under the lights game was against Morris Hills. Uh, unfortunately, a losing effort for the Minutemen, but a great crowd showed up for that game for, for uh, the football game earlier in, in October of this year, or last year, rather. 
I'm so, I'm so far behind. I still think it's 20, 2018. Time's moving too fast. But that means summer's coming, so that's a good thing. I mean, I mean, except the only bad thing about this temperature change is the pollen count. Everything's going up. It's going to be 70 degrees tomorrow, but cloudy, though. St. Peter's is out there first. Nice little zoom there by our, by our camera guy on the Mendham, the Mendham tent there. What would be your, like, words you would say to your players, like, before a game? Like, what would be your, like, your, would you have a catchphrase or would you have, like, something that you would say to them standardly, like a little, like, speech you would give them or would it change from game to game? It's ve very specific to, uh, to the game, depending on how the year's going, uh, how they look that week, how, how the... Uh, uh, how good the team we're playing is. Um, <laughs> you have to figure out what needs to be said and 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 say it, and it's uh, it's 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 different every game. Yeah, my golf coach was was that way, but he would uh he would basically tell us, okay, full disclosure, there is no way that we can win. <laughs> that, that's that's not something he I would advise. <laughs> He would no. We would play like against teams like Sparta and stuff. And Sparta's a juggernaut for golf. I went to Morris Hills and like Sparta, like we're, we were good, but Sparta was on another level, right? In, in those situations, <laughs> you need to pull out the speech from Miracle. <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's a good one for those situations. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. Players getting into their positions. We are about to begin the game with the face off in the center. Robbie McDonough is out there for St. Peter's, and Dylan Hakes is out there, the freshman for Mendham. And we are underway. A little battle for the ball. I'm sorry, that, that is going to be a, a, um, Ma Owen Matz out there for the faceoff. My bad. But here comes Hakes down the far side. Gets it over to his Going teammate. right to the cage. Right to the cage, right out of the gate. Pass in front. Oh, bobbled off the... Off the pass by Riccardi from Trinkoff. Here come the here come the Marauders. Coast to coast they go. And progress was impeded. And they reset. This is Tracy Bowers with it. I'm sorry, that was not Tracy Bowers, that was Andrew Williams, the junior attack. Now this is Robbie McDonough, the midi. They've had a chance to get their offense set up and get their subs in and um we're going to play six on six. Over across to Christian Della Rocca, their top goal scorer. Scored his 100th career goal in their last game against Morristown Beard. Wraparound shot in the front. Score right out of the gate. And, and Colin and Williams. A flag down. Oh, no, flag down. But I believe they're going to still count the goal. That was Colin Williams on the score. The sophomore attack. Let's see this again. Right in front with the contact. Let's it go in. So in the first, first few minutes of the first quarter, there are 11 minutes and two seconds remaining. One to nothing in favor of the Marauders on the road here in Mendham in this. Uh, it actually is starting. Looks like to we're going to have a man up also. Yes, there is going to be a man up advantage here. Number 44 takes the penalty. That's going to be um, Angelo Ionfrieda. And that's funny because he did say that he would find his way into the penalty box. We <laughs> had an informant our coming here. On him. That was what we got. <laughs> so right off the bat, advantage St. Peter's prep. They're up a goal, and now they are up a man in the first few minutes of the first quarter. 11.02 remaining, and it is raining out there. It was expected to dry up, but Mother Nature had other plans. So just like hockey, you would expect uh, them to kind of straddle with it a little bit and wait for the best opportunity to, to get a shot off. Subs coming on and off for both Mendham and St. Peter's Prep. That you saw Colin Williams came back on. McDonough with it. Gets it to Owen Matz, who just came off the bench. Back to McDonough. Andrew Williams tried to get at it, but great contact made. Still loose on the ground. It's going to be a loose ball push, and ball stays on this end. And 
And it is really starting to rain out there. Here's a snipe attempt, and score! Gets... Andrew Williams, Colin Williams' brother. The big 5'11 junior attack. That's his seventh goal of the year. Good start for St. Peter's. Two to nothing, 10-12 remaining in the first quarter of play here in the first live Varsity Spring broadcast for Morris Sussex Sports in this 2019 season. Rain is really turning on and off here. But again, we mentioned earlier, uh, the way that you play is dictated by the weather. And if this continues, they got to call on the fly like what they're going to do because this wasn't expected. It was expected to actually dry up. That's why we're here, not weathermen. That's exactly. Weathermen, the only, the only profession where you get paid to be wrong 50% <laughs> of the time. Here's Mendham with it. Matt LaRosa off the faceoff. And finally, Mendham, ever since the first possession, they've come up empty on the offensive end. But now they have an opportunity to cash in here. That was, uh, that was uh, Kevin Sansone in the X. Now to the front. This is Colin Uvino. Back over to Matt LaRosa. He wanted to take a shot there to Justin Beinfer, but decided not to. Here's Trinkoff in X being worked on. McCarty again, back to Trinkoff. They trade passes. Uvino over to Sansone. Again, Trinkoff in X being very careful with their passing here, trying to get whatever best shot they can. Oh, great fake, and a pass back to Trinkoff. Feigned a shot there for a second. Ricardi Being very again. patient. The defenseman comes out and tries to get a little aggressive. That's Matt LaRosa. Over to Kevin Sansone. Very, very patient. They're almost playing like they have a man up, but they don't. And a bad pass goes over the head of Sansone, and that'll be St. Peter's ball. That could be the weather. We, we saw compensating for the weather, too. And we saw, we saw that happen earlier in the JV game. The St. Peter's Prep JV goalie tried to clear it, and uh, it ended up going straight up into the air, right into the stick of a Mendham player, and he went right back down and scored. So they have to be very, very careful with their choice of passes in this and clearances, for that matter, in this game. But meanwhile, here's St. Peter's Prep down the other end. Colin Williams, he scored one of the two goals. His, the other one that was scored was his brother, Andrews. Now this is Robbie McDonough uh, being very, uh, very careful with it. Over to Andrew Williams. Man you just saw come on is number 27, J.D. Farkas uh, from Chatham, actually. So a more Sussex athlete on St. Peter. Almost lost the ball there, trying to use fancy footwork to get away from Carlin Uvino, but ends up getting it to McDonough. Back behind the goal. Oh, almost tried to get a shot off, did Christian De Rocco. And there's another bad pass over the head of Andrew pass Williams. To the other side and Mendham ball. So that was almost a mirror image of what happened on the other end. But this time it works out in Mendham's favor. And the Minutemen are going to have the ball. Good double team there on the other side on uh, La Rosa. Down the near side. Here comes Colby Morales. The, um, the, the midi now to Will Trinkoff. He's being worked, he was being worked on there by Henrik Muller. Very good. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. I watched a lot of hockey. <laughs> Shot attempt there by Sansone was saved. And now here comes Robbie McDonough bringing it down with heavy pressure he being put on. He is triple teamed. Wow. Looks, looks like St. Peter's got a timeout. Timeout called by St. Peter's, and we get, a, we get to catch our breath a little Spent bit here. Spent this timeout to keep possession. Somewhat like what you would do in basketball when the jump ball is about to be called and you don't have a possession arrow. Boop, timeout. 7.22 remaining in the first quarter of play here out of four. Um, uh, two to nothing, St. Peter's prep. Two goals in the game scored by the Williams brothers. Uh, that's Colin and Andrew. Uh, Colin got the first one. He's the younger brother. And Andrew got the second. Mendham empty on the board. Mendham trying to get to 500 in this game today. Coming up to three and three. They've actually traded off wins and losses. So by pattern, win would be the scenario today because it was lost, win, lost, win, lost, win. Today would be a, 
the win to get them up to 500. However, it's not working out too well for them. Two to nothing is the score. If it score. worked that way, we wouldn't have to play the game. Exactly. That's what. That's why you play. That's what I don't like about you know analytics and sports. Sometimes it's like the last time that they did this, they went this far. You can't say that. <laughs> you know. It's like the last time the Yankees went two and one, they went to the World Series. Like that doesn't make any sense, you know? You're two and one. Sorry, there's my little. Well, people in general have a very poor understanding of statistics, but uh, <laughs> when you try to apply them to situations like that, it's even worse. Exactly. They just try. I, I bet you, like a lot of the time, when people make those observations, they are fans of the team that they make the observations they're, about. They're, so they try to tell themselves. They're looking to make their argument. Exactly. <laughs> But, but I still think that Tiger will finish in the top ten at the Masters because the last time that he started under par and around, he finished in the, in the top ten. But that's my wishful thinking talking. Out of the timeout, St. Peter's with the ball. Great speed on display there by we number. Got a flag down. Flag down. Sides. Patrick Murphy you saw running it up. Not sure, not sure what. I didn't see it, so we'll see. It's going to be a delay. It's going to be on Mendham, though. Yep, because it's a delayed penalty. Andrew Williams with it now. Back oh, to Mendham was offsides, and now they sent the guy anyway because they're. Colin to Andrew. Andrew, the shot goes wide. St. Peter's will retain possession because they were closest to the ball as it went out. Sean Day is the starting goalie for Mendham today. A .518 save percentage on the year. Uh, last game, he had 10 saves and 10 goals allowed against Caldwell, and he loves to fish. That was what he put in his bio. The coach let the coach Michael Smith let the players fill out their own biographies. Great passing here. Andrew Williams. His second goal of the game. Tick tack toe passing by the Marauders. And they have a three to nothing lead over the Minutemen with 641 left in the first quarter of play here in Mendham. Mendham didn't know what well to do. Well executed man up. Well, it's tough when you got one less guy. <laughs> that was fast paced passing right there. That's what you need to do. So it is three to nothing with 641 left in the first quarter of play. Worst, they are worse record-wise, are the Marauders, but they are not worse playing-wise here today. Again, that's why you play the game. Three to nothing. As we come to another face-off in the middle. Mendham has, only, has had only two possessions that have made it to the cage. Both of them have come up empty, so obviously. Legal procedure on the face-off. Mendham ball. This is Matt LaRosa with it, the junior midi. Back to Trinkoff. That's been his roost at X today. Hasn't made his way to the front just yet. Beimfer over to Michael Riccardi, the junior. He's actually committed to uh, play at Furman as Riccardi, so he's a D1 talent. See if he'll implement that at any point today. Wanted, looks like he wanted to shoot, but did a little change up. Menno's being very patient with their offense. At some point, they're going to have to start attacking especially at this stage when you're down 3-0. Here's a shot at the encouragement of a parent, but <laughs> uh, Will Trinkoffs goes too high and wide, but Mendham is going to retain possession as Justin Beinfer was closest to the ball as it went out. And th those are the kind of shots you get when you pass the ball around the perimeter and don't try to attack. That's the best shot you're going to get off. Riccardi. Very hard to get it past number 18, Aiden Lazinski, as you saw there. But here's uh, Riccardi again. I'm sorry, that was not Riccardi. That was actually Kevin flag Sansone. Down. Flag down on the field. Don't know what that is for. But it's going to be on St. Peter's. This is Colin Uvino to Trinkoff. People yelling at him to shoot. What do you think? Do you, just, do you disagree with the strategy here? Oh, Riccardi tried well, to throw that over his back shoulder. I think Mendham needs to be a little more aggressive in attacking and, and trying to dodge and cut and create some opportunities. Here's Riccardi. Save in the front. A beautiful save by the goalie for St. Peter's prep. Now they'll have the man advantage. That'll give them the opportunity to uh, hopefully make something happen. And that's exactly what they need. Down three to nothing with now 5.04 left. In the first quarter, out of four.
getting everything sorted out with the official. Writing it in his book. It, the penalty is going to be on, uh, I believe, who's the penalty on? That's going to be on uh, number two, Colin Williams. So he's going to be off. The, the, the goal scorer, or he scored one of the three goals. Liam Brown is in goal for the Marauders today. He's great on high shots, so you would anticipate Mendham to try to go low, and that's what Riccardi tried to do earlier, but, did, but Brown was there to stop it either way. So now play resumes. Man up advantage here for, for the Minutemen. Trinkoff out of his roost from X. Tic-tac-toe passing here by, by Mendham, but they can't get anything done. But here's Riccardi, the shot. Great save there by Brown. High shot. Save just like your scouting report. <laughs> oh, a little crossover action there. You saw there by Liam Cagle, the senior. And now this is James Bristol with it. They are a man down. What do they have to do here now that they have a man down, a man down disadvantage? I think we are. Are we at back to even, even or just about to be? Yeah, they're about to be at even strength, so they but killed it, that penalty. To answer your question, though, you, you need to kill time and, and play keep away and avoid getting double teamed. That's the... Here's Colin Williams, who was in the box. Now over to J.D. Farkas, the freshman out of Chatham. Back to Christian De Rocco, the top goal scorer. You can see the glow of the light starting to show on the field. It is getting a little bit darker here in Mendham. Great pressure there being shown by number 12, Matt LaRosa. Farkas, little guy, he's a dynamo though. He's got a lot of speed. De La Rocca trying to do something with it, but a, the on-ball defense here of Matt LaRosa is doing wonders right now to stop De La Rocca from charging the cage. Oh, I tried to get it in front, a little high pass to Colin Williams to get his second goal of the game. But it was an errant pass, so now Mendham will get the ball. And Sean Day, the sophomore goalie, is going to get it over. This is Colby Morales. And, oh, tried to save that one from going out, but could not. Back to St. Peter's. Dave's three minutes back left. In. Yes, three minutes left to go in the first quarter here. Man, you just saw come off was Justin Beimfer. Whistle blows, we're, we're ready for action. In Mendo front. Was not quite ready, oh, they pay the price. Wow. The Williams connection strikes again. Andrew Williams already with a hat trick. And like you said, Mendham was caught off guard. St. Peter's is ready to go when the whistle blew and took Mendham about two seconds to realize we were playing. <laughs> but you know, every second counts. Great over-the-shoulder shot into the goal by Andrew Williams. It is 2.57 left in the first quarter. Four to nothing, St. Peter's. And Williams, Andrew Williams, already has a, a hat trick. Now, obviously, Coach Michael Smith for Mendham is going to want to say a lot of things to his club. At this stage, from your coaching experience, what would you say to your club in this point in the game? Well, I think the, I think the offense needs to... Uh be more aggressive. They, they've had the ball and, and the transition game has been relatively even, but uh, St. Peter's has been aggressive on offense and has converted and uh, Mendham just seems to be passing the ball around the perimeter, not even making an attempt to uh, to make something happen. So, About four shot attempts for Mendham in this game, but they've had possession, at least for the last couple minutes, more than St. Peter's has. And St. Peter's has been more liberal in taking shots. Maybe that's what Mendham has to do in the uh, subsequent three quarters that are gonna be in this game. Two and a half minutes left. Oh, that ball's gonna cross There's mid. There's a turnover coming back this way. And here we go, Michael Riccardi. He's, He's got, got a man on the crease. Here's a shot. Oh, lost the ball in front there. Did Will Trinkoff off the uh, potential assist from Riccardi. Ball's on the ground, still on the ground. That weather is really playing wonders for the ball here. No one can get possession. And finally, Menda ends up with it. That was Justin Beimfer on the pickup. 
Looks and like a timeout uh, yeah, by Mendham. Timeout called by Settle Mendham. Settle things down a bit. <laughs> they didn't want to lose possession there because there was – that ball was flying around like crazy on the ground. And uh, the rain has subsided uh, just a little bit, but still the damage has been done with that uh, little squall we had earlier. We'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, including Prospects Baseball and Softball Academy. And also, Mendel Lacrosse would like to thank their sponsors, including Platinum and Gold sponsors, Robert Stoltz House Purchasing Group, LLC, the Reagan family, the Trinkoff Waddick Group of Bank of America and Merrill Lynch, the Weeks family, Top Safety Products, Bailey Funeral Home, Chester Bagel, and the Salerno Duane Auto Group. A name you can trust. <laughs> And Gizzy Productions, video production and photography for weddings, sports, commercials, product media, live streaming, drone, anything. Gizzy is your man. Call 973-919-7055 or visit gizzyproductions.com for more information. And follow him on his social media at Gizzy Productions on Facebook and Instagram. Out of the timeout with 2.02 left in the first quarter. St. Peter's up 4 to nothing. It's been the Williams Show here today. Well, Ryan, we are uh, we are certainly not weathermen, and we are certainly not singers either. No. I'm so <laughs> Incredible insight, ladies and gentlemen, from Joe DiPompeo, the award-winning. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. But like I was saying before you said your incredible point, uh, <laughs> Andrew Williams scores three out of the four goals here in the first period for the Marauders of St. Peter's Prep and his brother Colin. Cashed in one of his own. Mendham has been very patient with their shooting, and that's been part of their downfall. But perhaps they can be a little bit more liberal with shot choice here as we come out of the timeout. Well, they have we to are, create shots. Yes, exactly. Uh, They're under two minutes. They, they haven't forced a, a couple because they haven't created them. Exactly. And, uh, they were easy saves. Again, the patience is showing. Got to charge if they want to get something going here. Sansone tried to find an alley. But great uh, zone defense shown by the Marauders. Here's a shot, a rocket. Great save there in the front by Liam Brown. Sansone was there on the shot. Ball is still loose, and St. Peter's is going to end up with it. Another missed opportunity for the Minutemen. This is James Bristol down the far side. Over to Andrew Williams. Can he get four in the game? We will see. Over to Colin. Coming up on a minute left in the first quarter. Not being very aggressive here. Kind of playing the way Mendham is playing now, but that's only because they have a four goal advantage. Not very much of a sense of urgency here, but every goal does count. But they're not gonna be as, as uh, chargy as they were to begin. Owen Matz, great pressure shown uh, there by Colin Uvino. In X, attempted wrap around here by Colin Williams. Oh, great pressure there shown by Matt LaRosa. Fell to the ground, flag is down though. A little bit of a delayed call there. The referee was thinking about it. And that's gonna be a man up advantage for St. Peter's again. Not what Mendham needed. 26 seconds left just about in the first quarter of play. Penalty there was on Matt LaRosa. That was the push that I referred to earlier. They called him for that off a delayed call. Oh, wanted to shoot there, decided not to, did Colin. Christian Della Rocco to Colin Williams again. Ball. Fantastic and a fantastic shot right on the opposite pipe. Colin Williams, his second of the game. The Williams brothers are showing up and showing out. All five goals for St. Peter's have come from Colin and Andrew Williams. That was a very, very well done man up. Great pass there by Della Rocco too to set up the shot to the, to the, uh, to the near side by, uh, by Colin Williams. And the Mendham crowd is beginning to subside just a little bit as almost nothing has gone Mendham's way, especially on the scoreboard, five zip with under 12 seconds left in the first. 
Another face off in the center here. This is Dylan Hakes, the freshman here for Mendham. I believe that is Sean Coleman, the sophomore there for St. Peter's. A little battle for it. We got five seconds left. Four seconds. Oh, man, and that was a, flag on oh, that was a hit. On number three, Dylan Hakes. St. Peter's. Not sure what they're going to call. It's either push with possession or a cross check. Let's see the aggression he hit him with here. You see him. He's going to come into your screen right here. Watch. Boom. My gosh. I think he used the stick. Yep. So he'll come off with .9 left into the first quarter. Uh, 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 left in the first quarter. Sorry. He is on one knee on the sideline, thinking about his actions. But nonetheless, five to nothing, St. Peter's, as we come to the end of the first quarter here in Mendham. Weather has been somewhat of a factor, but not for St. Peter's. They are out to a five to nothing lead. Three goals for Andrew Williams. He's got a hat trick already, which is half of his total that he had on the season coming into tonight. And his brother, Colin Williams, the sophomore, he has the other two goals. Now, do we want to show the pictures that he brought in today? Yeah, so you brought in some pictures, uh, Joe, from your coaching days at St. Peter's Prep. We're going to show them to the I folks. Did. When I did. When I little... found out I was uh, going to do this, I, I dug some things out of my basement. <laughs> that's the, the game ball from the first victory the program had, 428.99, and, and that's a ball signed by that team. How many D1 talents were on that team? Uh, there, there were none. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was your time. That was going to be. <laughs> I coach so and so. What's the ball on the left? That's uh, that's a ball that was signed by the entire team. Oh, that was just the ball that was yeah. signed, but the one on this the right. Was a, it was a great experience, and I kept everything because I, I got two Gatorade baths and uh, <laughs> I enjoyed every second of it. it awesome. Was a, it was now, a great what's, year. what's up next here? Got a poster signed. Uh, that was a, a card from uh, from the team at the end of the year. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, we were uh, we were just trying to get some victories. That was our, our goal that year. We, yeah. uh, as I said, the program hadn't won any games, and uh, I, I felt terrible for the seniors. And uh, we uh, we turned it around enough to get them a couple victories. Well, when you're in, when it's your first season in any sport uh, for any school, you know, I mean, just to get a couple victories is really a really an accomplishment in itself because you're basically starting out as an expansion team. Well, this was this was the fourth year of the program, that, but they had gone three years without a win. So, oh. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Oh, I apologize. That's okay. But still, you know, that's that's still an honor, you know, to be the first. Well, I, I just did not I did not want the seniors to to spend four years playing exactly, high school right. lacrosse and not win a game. I uh, you know, yeah. that was my worst my worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd, thank I'd, goodness I'd be the guy to send them out without a win. Thank God it didn't come true. <laughs> Back into game action here. Second quarter begins. They switch sides. St. Peter is now. On the yeah. left. The weather has significantly worsened. Oh, yes, it is raining, baby. Oh, my gracious sakes. You can see it on the screen. Everyone's running for cover here. But the Gladiators out on the field are staying out there. Con Williams in front. Man. Another shot. Two Does not seem tricks. to be slowing them down. The Williams brothers. A hat trick for each of them. It's six to nothing. St. Peter's over Menda. My goodness. Offensive onslaught here on the road for the Marauders. Pretty good for one and three. Yeah, exactly. Again, like I said at the beginning, this is a game where the records are much less than meets the eye. Great talent on either side here, but St. Peter's talent has been showing up and showing out, especially. The, the, Williams, the Williams unit of Andrew and Colin. Three goals for each of them here. My goodness. Another face off in the center here. A little scrum for it. And uh, Matt LaRosa is going to try to pick it up. But with the conditions, can he? Kept it in bounds. Did a good job to keep it in bounds. And it just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. And they're going to call. This will stay on this end. Stay St. Peter's St. Peter's. Ball. Actually, no, it's going to stay on this end, but it will be Mendham no. Ball. The referee was pointing to the inbound spot. And actually, I said that the Mendham crowd subsided. They have not. They've actually made their way down to the fence. 
but most of them have been left uncovered, so we feel very bad for them out there. Oh, great pressure shown on the charge there. They're not going to get any wetter than they already are. Exactly. <laughs> Might as well stay out there. You saw their great pressure shown by number 15, Zach Butcher, on Colin Uvino as he tried to charge the cage. But now play resets. Sansone with it. Over to Uvino. He cradles with it. And he gets it over to Michael Riccardi. And he has it again there off the pass from Trinkoff. And here's back to Trinkoff, back to his roost in the X. Trinkoff may try to wrap around here, but could not find a lane. Again, being very cautious, but they can't be cautious. They're down six. Got to start shooting if they want to get a chance to back, get back into this thing. And an errant pass by Uvino goes over the head of Riccardi. St. Peter's ball. What has happened to the Menda Minutemen here? That's the second time in this game that has happened for them. And Aaron passed. I was almost in the same exact position that the ball it went was, out. Yeah. Good pressure on the ride. Here comes Liam Cagle. Cross field to, I believe this is Bristol with it. I'm sorry, that was not Bristol, that was Colin Williams. Here's Andrew Williams. Good pressure shown by the defenseman Brendan Jones, the defensive senior for the Minutemen. That was uh, Patrick Murphy with it, the defensive midi. Now behind the goal. Wraparound shot! Wow! Finally, someone else gets a chance besides the Williams brothers. Somebody's got to come get him. Yeah. <laughs> can't leave him like that. And that was number six, Christian Della Rocco, the top goal scorer, finally gets his name on the, on the stat sheet. Yeah, there's got to be a slide there. Ooh, wow. No looker. No looker right into the top shelf. 7 nothing, St. Peter's. Good for St. Peter's to let someone else get a goal besides the Williamses. I mean, maybe they're, maybe they're stemming off a little bit. It's time to let, let our teammates do, do some work. That is his 102nd goal on his career for Christian De La Rocca. He's a junior, so you know he's only going to get better with years to come. St. Peter's a very young team, so you got to believe they're going to get even better and better he's, as a team also. A lot of juniors and sophomores on this team. Oh, look at the speed being shown here by Williams again. My God! Are you kidding me? Wait, I'm sorry, was that Williams? I'm not sure. No, that's actually Bristol. Bristol came right off of the faceoff and went coast to coast for the score. And James Bristol, the senior midi, one of the captains here. He had a goal last game against Morristown Beard, and he gets one on the board here today. What speed on display there by the senior. But a flag is down. What do you, what's that's the call here, like, Joe? Uh, looks like St. Peter's going to be man up. Again, that, that, that's a two-goal shift right there. If they can cash in again, timeout called on the field. 9.25 left you, in the second quarter. I think you keep pushing at this point till halftime at least. I give the Mendham fans a lot of credit for staying here. Even if they were up, I'd still give them a lot of credit for staying here because <laughs> the elements have not been kind. However, the rain is its only sprinkling a little bit now, but earlier it got bad for a second. Bad squall came in earlier. So we already talked about obviously what – you, what, you, what you would say to the players if you were the Mendham coach, what would you say right now if you are the if you are Greg Morrissey, head coach of St. Peter's I, I would keep this up till at least halftime. I mean, there's uh, at, at some point you, you take your foot off the gas, but uh, I think you got to keep this up till at least halftime and, and open this up a little bit more so uh, you can get some subs in in the, in the second half and play some people that might not have had playing time. But uh, you, re you really got to make sure the game is completely in control and uh, – I still wouldn't feel comfortable with this score at this time. Weirder things have happened. <laughs> much, much. <laughs> what, is, um, what is the biggest comeback that you have seen in your coaching career or in your playing career that you've either given up or come back from? Oh, that's a good question. I can think of a ton of football games. <laughs> right <laughs> off the bat, I'm trying to think of a lacrosse game. I'll, I'll, I'll work on that one. All right. <laughs> 
I think the uh, the Houston Oilers versus the Buffalo Bills in uh, no, <laughs> 1989. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, no. Playoff game was 35 nothing. Right, at, 35 uh, to three, I think. Yeah, yeah something they came like back. that. But that's a good. I mean, that's a good thing to stem off of. I mean, anything can happen. Also, you ever seen the video of the? I always mention this on the broadcast. I'm a high school football nerd. You ever seen the Texas high school football game when they were down like 42 to something? Five straight onside kicks. They tied the game up, and then on the ensuing kickoff. The team that they were trying to chase the entire time brings it back for a touchdown to win the game. <laughs> v- v- that is remember why that. Yep. you don't go deep. <laughs> Here we are excited for football, and it's April, folks. We are, we're ready. College. Well, ho- hopefully, Ryan, I'll be back in the fall. Oh, yeah. We'd love to have I you. can do football, too. <laughs> I mean – uh, I mean, college spring games are starting up. We thought we had spring football for a little bit, but then that, 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 that ended. That, what a failure that was, huh? Considering what a, a big football fan I am, and I managed to watch about the first three minutes of the opening game and, and forgot it even existed after that. How do you, how do you think, I think Victor- that was foretelling for what was going to happen? <laughs> We're what talking do you think about Victor- the Alliance of American Football. What do you think Vince McMahon is going to do for the XFL once that comes, comes into fruition in 2021? Uh, the the same the same thing as last time. Oh, I, don't, I don't think any of these leagues are going to succeed. I'm actually reading a very interesting book right now about the uh, the USFL. Yeah, um, I'd actually had promise. That was probably the best uh, the best secondary football league uh, there was and the most successful. Oh, another shot at Oh man, shot over the top there by Zach Buch- uh, Butcher. We cer- certainly don't want to get political here, but our, our current president uh, is the one that tanked that league. Well, that has nothing to do with him as a president, but Correct. that is true. <laughs> he did. Small potatoes, as he said. I watched the 30 for 30. <laughs> Andrew Williams with it on the near side. I'm glad, I'm glad we have things to talk about when it's 8 nothing that don't uh, that's, the game. that's what the best part is. Oh, <laughs> great save off the high shot there by, uh, by Day. Finally a highlight on his stat sheet today as he's <laughs> given up eight goals thus far. Down the far side with pressure. That's LaRosa. tough. A goalie can only do so much if, uh, you know, even the best goalies in the world give up uh, 15 goals in a game yeah. sometimes. It's the three saves you make that make the difference. Sansone over to Trinkoff and X. Kind of straddles with it, waiting for an opportunity, but waiting is not the name of the game here for Mendham. They want to try to be aggressive, but they, they really have it. They haven't been taking a lot of shots, despite the fact that they are down eight with 8.14 left in the first half. But here's a shot. Oh, another save. Great Telegraphed one. Telegraphed it from way outside. That's a very easy save to make. Another high, uh, high save there by Liam Brown. We are at 8.09 left in the second quarter of play. And keep in mind, folks, there is no mercy rule in effect for lacrosse. We can go as Not high. at this level. Not correct. at this level. <laughs> so Fourth grade, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Uh, after 8 or 10, they... Um, they give the uh, option of not facing off and just giving the ball to the uh, team that got scored on. So this that's kind of a peril because, you know, like with football, is there, running, is there a running clock in lacrosse for, for, uh, for high school? Not high school. Exactly. No. So it's not like football. I think football. the JV game had a running clock, but this game yeah. does not. Well, I don't know if that was no a shot. no angle on that shot. I don't know if that was a shot or a very hard a, pass. but That was a shot, but he needed to take two more steps. Had he made it, yeah, made a couple steps right uh, towards the center, that would have been good. Makes a fake at it. Oh, there's great feet in front. I lost it again. There's some attempt to create something there. That's a that's a, a good, good oh, sign. Oh, like comes out of it. Bime for and scores. And a flag down too. There's a lot of flags in this game so far. And that's going to be, I believe, that's a man up advantage for Mendham now. Exactly Should what be. they need to get in this game at least somewhat. Well, that was Justin Bime for the sophomore, voted the top freshman in the state of New Jersey for the cross in 2018. With the contact, made the goal. So, yes, that will be a man-up advantage for Mendham after the contact. Bit of an and one there, if you will, by Justin Bime for that is his seventh goal of the season. Shows us why he won that award. Aggression is really what you gotta you gotta implement when you're a lacrosse player at any level, and that's exactly what he just did. He's had, he has two multi-goal games on the year, a hat trick also. And the athleticism you just saw on display that his coach told us so much about when we talked to him before the game. 
If he's doing this at this at this age, imagine what he's going to be like when he's a senior. He's going to have D1 guys knocking at his door. As we come to another faceoff of the middle, Mendham baseball team uh, making an appearance here. They just came off their games, coming around to, to check out the action. We do not know the result of that game. And possession is going to go to St. Peter's. Coming off there, you saw our number 12, Billy Note. On is Colin Williams. St. Peter's has possession and is man down. So Mendham should look to double the ball at this point. Working it around here is number 22, Patrick Murphy. And here it comes. Oh, great way to get out of the Beats double the team. Beats the double team, nice pass. But and none the less, man down. nonetheless, Colin Williams. I cannot believe it. We're going to need another hat soon. We're, we are going to need another hat. Four goals on the game for Colin Williams. My goodness, nine goals in the first two quarters, and we still have 7.13 left in this second one. Nine to one, St. Peter's. We thought that that was going to be the time where Mendham was going to try to get some goals into the net. However, a missed opportunity for the Minutemen. Colin Williams scores man down for St. Peter's. St. Peter's is still man down. You gotta gotta believe that Michael Smith is not gonna be happy if they give up not one but two goals in this man man up situation here. But good hustle, way, good ground ball at 29. Number 29, that was uh, Brendan Jones, the senior defense, who is uh, working as also Mendham's as a Mendham's still mini. hustling. Look at that hustle off the field on the substitution. They are not giving up. Trying to look for some sort of a shot attempt, but the, that zone defense of, of St. Peter's has been working wonders for them, not letting them get any open lanes for a shot. Fains the shot in front, another score! Off the assist from Kevin Sansone, Justin Beinfurt cashes in again, his second of the game. Found a lane that time. <laughs> There's the old announcer, Jinx, strikes exactly. again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it worked out in favor for Mendham as their second goal on the board, and Kevin Sans, uh, sorry, um, Justin Beinfurt's second goal of the game. So 6.36 left in the half. And Mendham has some life in him at this point. And now, now St. Peter's can't really come off the gas pedal. They got to they pressure now because if those two goals were scored in that time frame, if, this, if the pattern continues, then you're going to have to be more cautious. Correct. It's not, no longer a cakewalk. Everything is quiet in the arena as they face off. And here we go. A little tie up for it. And La Rosa ends up with it. And again, St. Peter's, Peter's gets it. That's the second time that's happened in the recent minutes for Mendham off of face offs. And this may cost them if they get another goal in here. Here's Robbie McDonough over to Andrew Williams. Oh, look at the speed little, here. A little bit too aggressive there by the defenseman. Ooh, yeah. I think that hit the pipe. It did hit the pipe. Shot goes wide by Christian Della Rocca. Play resumes. St. Peter's retains possession. Della Rock over to Colin Williams. Colin spins, gets back to X. Good pressure shown. Again, Andrew trying to get trying to get past uh, 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 Griffin Kervik, but could not. Now play resets. Here's McDonough, the charge. Tried to bounce it in Safe. there, ball still loose and covered up by, by Sean Day. Great save off the bouncer. And a poor pass there goes out of play, St. Peter's ball, and it is raining again. <laughs> oh, pass shot, pass attempt in front good, there. Good thought. Good thought, but could not be executed there. 
It was too high for Andrew Williams to get under. Mendham gets, it, gets the ball back. 5.09 left in the half here. 9 to 2 St. Peter's. An offensive onslaught by the Marauders so Throwing far on the minute. Some checks and some wrap checks. They are not successful. LaRosa. Here's Sansone with it. Trying to spin and get around the double team. Could not. Bimeford tries to get past another double team, but could not as well. Here's a shot there, score! Nine to three now. Michael Riccardi with a shot right into the bottom. 442 left in the half, and Mendham, just like that, is trying to get back into this thing. Good job fighting through, uh, fighting through the defenseman's stick on the crease. That is his 11th goal of the year, the Furman commit trying to do his part to get the Minutemen back into this game. And ladies and gentlemen, you may be able to see it on our screen, but right now it is absolutely raining like crazy out there. But the Mendham, Mendham students that are out there, many of them remain uncovered, and they don't care. They're out there supporting their, supporting their boys no matter what. Gotta, gotta love seeing that. Nice face off. Here's Mendham again, nice. another shot and a score! Riccardi again! Tit for tat, two goals in a matter of seconds, nine to four, St. Peter's. Right off the face off, Dylan Hakes to Riccardi, boom, bam, pow, just like that, nine to four. Now we don't have to talk about football. No, we anymore. do not, we can talk about the game, this is great <laughs> stuff. I imagine, as much as I like that conversation, I'd, ra I'd much rather take an exciting game and uh, Maybe a coincidence, but ever since the rain picked up, Mendham's offense has been picking up. If oh, you just, another another face great face-off win. Face -off Identical win. to the last Riccardi one. again. Another shot. Oh, that one goes wide. Sansone had it. Two identical face-offs. Yes. I don't know what happened there and why they weren't doing that earlier. But either way, what is working is working right now, and they're not going to come off that gas pedal. Which, if you're, I mean, but they probably should have done this earlier, but got to, got to be a, a great a test to St. Peter's zone defense they've been showing in the cage. And a pass there goes over the head of Riccardi and... At least they're trying to make stuff happen, though. Yeah, out of play, though. St. Peter's gets it back. 4.09 left in the half. I think this may be the worst we've seen with this weather. Oh, my gracious sakes. It is pouring out there. In front, Andrew Williams tried to get a shot, but it went too far past him. Mendham ball. Mendham has a lot of life on both sides of the field now. Looks like a whole new team. And Colin Uvino will have the first touch. Gets it over to goalie Sean Day, who maneuvers it to Beimfer, and here we go. Here's Sansone, straddles with it. Nice dump to the crease. Oh, Riccardi tried to get the no-looker, but with the pressure, could not get it in. Any clo anywhere close to getting in, but Mendham retained possession as Sansone was closer to the ball as it went out of bounds. 3.36 left. Riccardi, here's a shot attempt. Oh, it goes way wide. But again, Mendham will get possession back. That was a rocket of a shot there by Bimefer. Uvino to La Rosa. That's gonna leave a bruise. Here's Bristol, he already has a goal in the game today. Oh, great pass deflection there by Ryan Puglio, the midfielder. Fast break Good attempt ground possibly. Ball. Ground ball picked up there by Ion Frieda. There's a trailer nobody's picking up. But they're going to settle. 2.20 left in the half. Mendham trying to get one or two more on the board before we go into the break. It is 9 to 4 right now. At one point, they were down 8 to nothing. What a story it would be if the Minutemen can come back and win this game. So you better not go anywhere because we may be in for a very exciting second half. Sansone and Riccardi trading passes. Shot attempt. Oh, great save there off the shot from Bimefer by Liam Brown. 
Matt LaRosa will get it. Under two now. That's Will Trinkoff now in the X. Trinkoff to Sansone. Sansone the shot. Oh, it hit the pipe. It hit the pipe and it goes out of bounds. It's a game of inches and it showed there. Again, Mendham gets it back. There's, there's Trinkoff off the pass from Riccardi. Riccardi gets it again. Out of bind for Sansone. Another Aaron shot. But, but again, Mendham gets it. This is tiring for a defense when you got to stay there this entire time like this. But the lucky for St. Peter's, only 90 seconds until they get a break. It's no fun being a goalie either when you're getting peppered <laughs> yes, for shots. Yes, exactly. Trinkoff tries to spin. Can't get it past the defenseman, though, uh, Hendrik Muter. Good ball movement by Mendham. But nothing can be had of it, at least at this point. Oh, great shot in front. Oh, Trickoff could not get it in. Goes high and wide. Mendham looks like they figured out how to, how to beat this defense. Yes, they are keeping possession of the ball. And this may tire out St. Peter's in the long run. 60 seconds left in the half here. Nine to four, Mendham trying to get one more on the board before we head into the break. To Sansone. Trinkoff again to Sansone. They are trading passes here in front. Oh, man, wide again for Trinkoff. Mendham keeps possession. St. Peter's is just, they're stuck there. They've been stuck there for, I think, the past three minutes. Mendham has had it near the cage. Beimfer. Oh, wanted to shoot it, but decided There's not to. Oh, Four. a bouncer from the near side by Kevin Sansone. His first goal of the game, and Mendham has pulled within four, nine to five, 34 seconds left in the half. What a surge for the Minutemen late. And what accuracy there on the shot. From bottom to top, and from top to bottom, that was an incredible shot. Now, we saw great face-offs uh, earlier on. Yeah, this would be uh, fantastic if they could pop one more in before the half. No, they don't need to face off. Oh, here Mendham we go. The ball. 30 seconds left in the half here in Mendham. It's raining. It's pouring. But Mendham has not been snoring, especially on offense. What a surge they've had late in this first half. They were down eight to nothing at one point. Now it is nine to five. A shot from Sansone. Oh, a great stick save. Oh, but it gets ricocheted in the air and caught by Trinkoff in front. Oh, Brian for almost got to it, but this went too a, far behind it. This is a completely different team we're seeing right now. 6.7 seconds left. Timeout called by St. Peter's in order to keep possession. What a sequence that was. The wet Mendham's a lot better than the dry Mendham. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yes. Maybe that's what they were expecting. Maybe they strategized. Oh, it's going to rain. <laughs> and then it didn't rain. They're like, oh, goodness. And it started raining, and all of a sudden, they are clicking like that. The run that they are on right now is a 5-1 to one run after being down 8 to nothing in the second. They have cut it to 9-5 to five as the first half is going to come to a close in about 6.5 seconds. Great game to watch, especially when you're inside. <laughs> and for those of you uh, wondering for Masters results, actually Tiger Watch. Tiger Watch, um, six under through 36 holes. I'm not sure what the, you've been watching the Masters? I have not. Okay, I'm, I'm not sorry. A, <laughs> not a golf fan. Not, not exciting enough for me. Yeah. Golf I, and baseball a little too slow for me. It's more of a relaxing game when you want to watch and you're just, Especially when it's raining outside. Golf is a great sport to watch when it's raining outside. Especially when it's nice on TV. You live vicariously through the, you know, it's like January. They're playing See, in the, Hawaii. The nice, uh, <laughs> the nice greens, right? Yes, exactly. Now, well, there's a tremendous amount of lacrosse on TV now. Yeah. Uh, so that's something uh, 20, 30 years ago, there was uh, three games a year on ESPN, and now uh, – now there's games uh, every weekend and uh, yep. some weeknights, multiple channels. So. Yep. We 
got a, oh, we got five people tied for the lead in the Masters. Wow, that's gonna be a crazy weekend, folks. But speaking of crazy, we've got a crazy game going on right now. We are at six seconds left, remaining in the half. St. Peter's trying to get some sort of a score, and they do! Score. Wow. Wow! That's not what Mendham wanted. The charge in by Robbie McDonough, the best midi dodger they got, comes in and scores with five tenths of a second left in the first half. It is 10 to five, St. Peter's prep. Mendham, all they had to do was just stop him there, but they couldn't. Maybe that's the exclamation point that St. Peter's is gonna need to pull away and survive this attempted comeback by the Minutemen once the second half comes into play. Five tenths of a second left is probably gonna be uh, nothing need happening here. Need to call Trent Tucker out of retirement. See if you get that reference. If anyone gets that reference, please let us know in the live chat. I would <laughs> love to hear your input on that one. <laughs> Face off, but most likely nothing's gonna come out of it due to the fact that there is under one second left in the half. And the siren sounds, half time. and we got halftime here in Mendham. And we will be right back with the second half after this commercial break. Ryan Sudel and Joe D. Pompeo, stay tuned because we may have a wild one ahead of us. I actually got to see some medicine at a very young age through some special circumstances. My uncle was a nurse anesthetist, so I got to um, see some surgical center, both outpatient and uh, kind of front office billing from shadowing from when I was in middle school even. I enjoyed taking care of uh, athletes, getting them back to the pursuits that they like to, uh, like to do in their free time and professionally. I mean, the thing that definitely struck me from the day I started working here was really the atmosphere of uh, providing comprehensive patient care in a very uh, friendly environment, very professional, and uh, certainly I think the biggest thing for patients that I've been seeing is the ability to have, you know, com comprehensive musculoskeletal care under one group's heading. And I think that the uh, kind of width and breadth of our practice allows us to really take care of patients efficiently, quickly, get them back to doing the things that they like to do. I've always wanted to help people and growing up, I knew I wanted to be in a medical field. One thing that makes me proud of the practice is that we all truly care for our patients. We're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, we don't mind if, if our patients call us and we actually want our patients to be comfortable to treat us like their family as like we treat them as our family. I love sports, I love basketball, I love um, you know, running with my wife. We know at the end of the day with positivity and hard work, we're, we can get the athlete back to the sport they want to, they want to get back to. We at More Sussex Sports want to honor every athlete, no matter if it's JV, varsity, freshman, or the star of the team, or someone who barely gets playing time. Everybody deserves the recognition that they get for every single bit of hard work that they put in, season in, and season out for their sports and their school. So that's why we came up with the 2018-2019 More Sussex Sports trading cards as a way to recognize these athletes and to memorialize the 2018-2019 More Sussex Sports season. So. How do you get your trading card? Well, if you make a small $17 donation, we will create a custom trading card for you or your favorite athlete that will be posted on our trading cards page and individually on our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook pages. And on the trading cards, we'll also link it to your huddle page, recruiting profile, or social media account. So, why are we asking you for donations? Well, though more Sussex Sports is free to the public, meaning that it's free to watch any of our live broadcasts, listen to our podcasts, read our articles, etc., there are a lot of costs that go into making all the best content for you. So by buying a trading card for either you or your favorite athlete, you are not only doing them a service, you are doing us a service by helping us bring even more of the best coverage of Morris and Sussex High School sports than there ever can be. I actually got to see some medicine at a very young age through some special circumstances. My uncle was a nurse anesthetist, so I got to um, see some surgical center, both outpatient and uh, kind of front office billing from shadowing from when I was in middle school even. I enjoyed taking care of uh, athletes, getting them back to the pursuits that they like to, uh, 
like to do in their free time and professionally. I mean, the thing that definitely struck me from the day I started working here was really the atmosphere of uh, providing comprehensive patient care in a very uh, friendly environment, very professional, and uh, certainly I think the biggest thing for patients that I've been seeing is the ability to have, you know, com comprehensive musculoskeletal care under one group's heading. And I think that the uh, kind of width and breadth of our practice allows us to really take care of patients efficiently, quickly, get them back to doing the things that they like to do. This is Prospects Baseball and Softball Academy in Randolph, New Jersey. This is your source for the best one-on-one -on -one professional hitting, pitching, fielding, catching, and game IQ in all of Morris Sussex. Call them now at 973-970-9102 or visit them at 11 Middlebury Boulevard in Randolph, New Jersey. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. Russ's Rules for Athletics in School. If you want to play sports in college, don't think an online athletic profile is going to get you there. Online profiles can be great, but you need to get in the game, on the field, and off the field when it comes to athletic recruiting. Create a list of D1, D2, and D3 schools that you think are a good academic and athletic match, and then communicate with coaches with purpose and polite persistence. I'm Russ Vitale of Academic Resources, and remember, we are on your team. Call us on 973-292-0505 for all your athletic recruiting, test prep, and college advisement needs. Good luck out there and be safe. seconds one to Carrington she didn't get it off in time but she does put it down welcome to Morris Sussex sports the only place that covers high school sports in Morris Sussex and parts of Warren County while other news outlets are shutting their doors Morris Sussex sports continues to grow our content makes you feel good whether it's a video of that winning goal a photograph of that unbelievable moment, or a special interest story about hope, about love, about community. We have one of the best internship programs for high school and college age students. We find out what their interests are, what they're passionate about, and we give them a real world experience in sports journalism and broadcasting. And he scores! While Morris Sussex Sports continues to grow and provide the best content available in high school sports, we know we can't do it without you, our loyal audience. We value kids, their education, their creativity, and believe their future is rooted in what we, as a community, put into them. I actually got to see some medicine at a very young age through some special circumstances. My uncle was a nurse anesthetist, so I got to um, see some surgical center, both outpatient and uh, kind of front office billing from shadowing from when I was in middle school even. I enjoyed taking care of uh, athletes and getting them back to the pursuits that they like to uh, 
like to do in their free time and professionally. I mean, the thing that definitely struck me from the day I started working here was really the atmosphere of uh, providing comprehensive patient care in a very uh, friendly environment, very professional, and uh, certainly I think the biggest thing for patients that I've been seeing is the ability to have, you know, com comprehensive musculoskeletal care under one group's heading. And I think that the uh, kind of width and breadth of our practice allows us to really take care of patients efficiently, quickly, get them back to doing the things that they like to do. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Mendham High School here. The rain that was simply a drizzle at the beginning of the game has turned into a downpour. And originally at the start of the game, it was a downpour of offense on Mendham by St. Peter's, an eight to nothing deficit. But in the second quarter, Mendham came back, or at least attempted to come back, made it nine to five in the final minute. But then right before that buzzer happened, St. Peter's prep ran down, got a quick score by number 10, Robbie McDonough. And now it is 10 to five, St. Peter's going into the second half. Now, knowing what has happened in, you know, we talked about what you would say if you're up 8 nothing, if you're down 8 nothing. Now it's a five-goal game, which is very manageable. If you were a coach from both sides, Joe, which, what, what mantra would you take? Well, well the first couple of minutes here are going to really tell us what's going on. Uh, we really saw two games um, in the first half, yeah. and I think uh, whether we see the, the domination by St. Peter's or, or Mendham's comeback in, in the first couple minutes of the uh, third quarter here will tell us where this is going to go. If St. Peter's uh, pops another four or five goals in, I, I think uh, they're going to have a pretty comfortable lead. If Mendham uh, continues to play the way they are, they're going to continue to chip away at this uh, lead, and hopefully they can catch up before the end of the game. But, uh, I mean, for both teams, it's, it's a whole new uh, – the game is close enough where uh, you really got to start over. It's a whole new game, whole new half. You make your adjustments, and uh, you come out as if the game was starting. Speaking of starting, here we go. Oh, a tie-up here to begin, and a face-off win by Dylan Hakes. He had a couple that led to well, – it led to one goal, and then it almost led to another goal, but the shot by Riccardi on the other end went too high. But meanwhile, they switched sides, and here we go with the second half of action. 11.40 remaining here. Beimfer has it. He's got a, he's got a goal in this game so far. That's right, he's got two. Sansone. Here's Riccardi. Back to Trinkoff. Back to Riccardi again. Back and forth they go. Bimefer has it at the front. Tic-tac-toe passing here, but not leading to anything just yet for the Minutemen. Really like going back and forth, but all feigns the pass there, did Sansone. Sansone gets it back to Trinkoff. Here's La Rosa to Riccardi. Wanted to take a shot there, did Sansone. Oh, but a great save at point-blank range by Liam Brown. Almost every single Mendham offensive player feigned the shot. You didn't know which one was going to take it. Sansone was the one that took the call, but a great stick save in the front by Liam Brown. So far, this looks uh, much more like the... Another save! Much more like the alive Mendham than the beginning of the game, so... That shot there was by Michael Riccardi. And another great save there, but it went right to the middle, so it was easy to save there, but still, what instinct. Brown brings it up. and the Nice pa outlet pass. Yeah, it did not get uh, stay in the stick. And uh, St. Peter's ends up with it. And here is... This is going to be... Oh, Colin oh. Williams wanted to shoot, but uh, decided not to. Probably was the correct move. Takes a lot of patience and maturity to, to pull back there. It is raining the hardest it has this entire game right now. You see the defenseman working right now uh, is Sean Coleman getting his first action in the game tonight. A little low roller, couldn't get anything done. And here comes Coleman. Bringing it all by himself. Here's Sansone a... to Riccardi, the shot, save again. St. Peter's trying to do whatever they can to thwart the comeback, and Liam Brown is That's making quick work of it, and now we have an injury. Hurt. But he gets up, but he's, he's limping, and that's Andrew Williams, the junior. He has three goals in the game thus far, thankfully getting up on his own power. 
Do we know what happened to him? Do we see what, what, what happened? Was it a collision? I didn't see it. We did not have a camera on that, but it's obviously a lower extremity injury as he comes off the field limping, and it is, oh my gracious. This Woo is a, a whole new level of rain. You can see it on the screen, folks. This is that kind of rain where you can see it on TV. I think, luckily, I think the press box will float if yes, needed. Yes, yes, we are, we are reinforced in here. We got tarps on the cameras on the upper level. Our camera inside here is inside the window, so we should be safe here. The only, the only bad thing. we're not gonna be able to see anymore. Yeah, the, yeah, this, this rain, we're gonna have to use the monitor at some point here. <laughs> But we'll make do with what we have so far. Here's Trinkoff nice. to the middle. Pass. Oh, man. Should Good he have shot it? Mendham. Should he have shot it? Uh, probably, but. Michael Riccardi decided to be selfless there and try to give it to Sansone, but it went too far ahead of him to have anything happen. Now, here's Riccardi off the pass from Trinkoff. Beimfer. These guys are moving the ball pretty well considering the weather conditions. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Waiting for one guy to slip. That's all it takes, literally and figuratively, in this wet weather. Beimfer almost slipped for a second, but regains his footing. The shot score! Yeah, he and went low goal. with it, and it worked out. Just wanted to make sure he wasn't in the crease, but that, that counts. And he's got I've a hat trick in this game, folks. 10 to 6, Mendham. That's exactly what the Minutemen need with 8.35 left in the third quarter. Proud of the practice he almost that slipped there, but regained his footing. And went there. right into Play the for bottom left day, corner of the goal. Beat the goalie near side. To take this game to only a four goal deficit as the rain continues to pour down. We alluded to this earlier. Beginning of the game, when it wasn't raining this hard, Mendham was struggling. That was when they had that 8 nothing deficit. Now, ever since it started to rain hard, it's been the absolute opposite. And the run continues for Mendham. It is now a 6-2 to two run on goals ever since the 8 to nothing deficit. And another face-off win here. Up to Riccardi. In the front, oh, score again! One. Will Trinkoff pulls it within three! Hold your horses, folks. The Minutemen are riding in with a 10 to seven deficit now, down eight to nothing at one point. Two goals in a matter of seconds. There's Trinkoff's first goal of the game. It's eighth goal on the year. And with 826 left in the third quarter, it is now only a three goal game. Mendham's fans starting to come alive, but they're not leaving their seats without their umbrellas. They are staying right where they are. Face off in the center. Another easy win Another for Another easy win. Hakes to Riccardio, could not gain control, but Trinkoff's there to bail him out. Trinkoff. This is a whole new team here. Oh, Look what a catch. He, what a save. Sansone saved that one from going all the way to Chester. If my direction direction is right. I think you're right. I, I hope so. <laughs> La Rosa. Here's Beimfer. Hakes has been an unsung hero in this game. The freshman midi. Here's another. Oh, just came off the stick. There's the weather showing his showing its effects there. Trinkoff almost had his second consecutive goal, but it just came off the stick and goes out. But Mendham gets it back. Sansone was the closest. Working it around the perimeter. They don't have to be aggressive, at least at this point. Riccardi, Hakes, Trinkoff. Great zone defense here by St. Peter's to prevent any open scoring chances. Shot, tried to go bottom shelf, but Trinkoff's shot bounces too wide to the right. But again, Mendham gets it back. This is exactly what we saw at the end of the half, of the first half on the other side of the field. Mendham just had those guys out of, uh, close to the out of bounds line at the right time to keep possession whenever a shot would go awry. And that's what's happened the past couple shots here. Dylan Hakes being double teamed. Over to Riccardi, back to Hakes. Hakes to Beimfer. 
Makes a move, charges in, save. And he comes out with it. Well, never mind. He, see, now it's getting hard to see. But here comes a fast break attempt. Tracy Brower's had it. This is the first time St. Peter's has had possession in this half, I believe. Yes, that is true. Mendham did a very good job of uh, narrowing the gap and maintaining possession and moving the ball around in this weather. Now they got to see if their defense can come in clutch here. The Mendham fans, that are the Mendham students that are still here without umbrellas, without their hoods up, they are the real MVPs here, folks, at least from the fan standpoint. Yes, they should. We tip our hats to you, folks. And there's an errant oh, pass. Oh, man, that's Mendham's what Mendham needed. Back. J.D. Farkas could not catch up to it. Mendham ball, 5.56 left in the third quarter. Did you get a good parking space today? <laughs> well, <laughs> I've been thinking about that, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, I'm going to need a ride to my car. Yeah. Speaking of rides, almost, uh, Riccardi almost took a ride into the goal. Oh, another, another great nice save. Nice catch by Sanson. Oh, shot goes wide, nice but shot. trick off was there. Yeah, I, I, I didn't realize where the field was. I, I pulled in and parked <laughs> pretty much on the street. So oh boy, it's a long walk here. It's going to be an even longer walk back. Yeah, we got, I think we got a big enough umbrella. We'll try to, we'll try to fit <laughs> you in. <laughs> 527 left in the third. Three goal game, 10 to seven men. I'm trying to mount a comeback. And Shot and one. score! Just like that, right in front of the goal, Justin Beimfer, his fourth of the game. It's 10 to eight. What it, now we said what happened to Mendham, what has happened to St. Peter's? Well, your, your question you asked me before about uh, the largest comeback I've seen, uh, we, we might answer that question today. <laughs> oh my goodness, eight down, now to 10 to eight. They are on an 8-2 run in goals scored. And with a face-off win here, that leads to a fast break. And Hakes has done that more than once in this game so far. They're being wise to keep him out there. Hakes wins it. Mendham has been dominating the face-off since uh, they started their comeback Oh, here. but great That's pressure a shown. That's part of why, they're, uh, why they've made this comeback. Who is that with the ball? I believe it was number 16, Owen Matz there. Got it away from, from Hakes to prevent the scoring chance. Oh, what a hit! That's going to be a flag. flag. And a man down for Mendham. And by man down, I mean they're going to be a man down. <laughs> what a collision we just saw. Let's see this on the replay. Oh, my gosh! Colin Williams ran into a brick wall named Angelo Ionfrieda. And uh, mentioned earlier that it was uh, it was going to be him that was going to be in the penalty box a couple times, and well, that's range true. That's his second trip in the game today. That big body paid paid dividends as it results in a penalty. I don't even know if that was intentional. He just ran, he just ran right into well, the, it. I think the penalty would have been on um, on the other guy that pushed him from behind, but uh, he happened to push him into. A brick wall looking the other way. You're correct. So now St. Peter's a sigh of relief, at least for the time being. And they are going to trade off players here. So you can do that, right? You can take a player off. You can put a player in the box, basically. Uh, when when the ball's dead, yes. Yes, and I there's a St. score. St. Peter's just scored. We're having a hard time seeing here. Yes. We could not see who scored it, at least from this vantage point. Yeah, you can sub through the box any time on the fly, yes, like hockey. Exactly. But, uh, so let's it? see who it was. Oh, it was a rocket shot there from from about uh, 10 yards out by Robbie McDonough to make it 11 to 8. That is his second goal of the game. We apologize for missing that, but this this rain on this window, we can't stand the rain against our window, especially when we're trying to see out of it. Anybody who gets that reference, you are an amazing person. Do you get that one? <laughs> I don't. I countered with it. For the, for so the. When, when, when you figure out Trent Tucker, I'll figure that one out. <laughs> Ball comes loose after the faceoff, picked up by LaRosa. 440 left in the third quarter. 
Trent Tucker played for the Knicks in the late 80s, and uh, I think the game was on Martin Luther King Day. The Knicks were down by one, or we were down by two, with a tenth of a second on the clock, and uh, they inbounded the ball, and he caught it, shot a three-pointer, uh, and they changed the rule after that. Oh, I've seen that before. You couldn't, yeah, you can't uh, get a shot off. Yes. He held it for, like, more than a tenth of a second, too. Yeah. Speaking of holding, Beinford hold it, held it there for a second against the double team. I, I think a great Kevin shot attempt, and he scores! That's Kevin Sansone! His second goal of the game. Let's see this on replay. In the air. Nice. That, may, that may be an orthopedic gets to New Jersey Play of the Week nominee right there. Using every single fiber of his being to get everything behind it. And now it's a two-goal game again. 11 to 9, 408 left in the third. Face-off won by Mendham. Here comes Colin Uvino. Mendham crowd coming alive. In X, it's Trinkoff. Tries to get it around the defender but couldn't. Dumps it off to La Rosa. Being very careful with it. Don't need to pressure too much. Trinkoff tried to wrap it around. Was cut off. Ball's on the ground there. Oh, nice and break right coming the other way. Michael Riccardi gave it up. And here comes Bristol. He scored on a fast break earlier. There's a flag down. Flag down. Oh, man. You saw, I believe, after the whistle, Brendan Jones laid out. It was actually not Bristol. That was uh, Tracy Bowers, the uh, defensive midi. And the call is going to be on whom, uh, Joe DiPompeo? I believe that's going to be. Yeah, it's on, that's on prep. Looks like uh, 21. It's 21 on prep. That's going to be a made-up advantage for Mendham. Huge break Can late pull in the third. within one here. Number 21 on St. Liam Peter's, Cagle. Liam, Cagle. Liam Cagle. One of the captains. The left side mid. Oh, lost the ball there, but... Uh, Picked up by Sansone. Big opportunity here for Mendham to pull within one. Coming up on three minutes left in the third. Beimfer to Riccardi. Over to Sansone. Sansone the rocket. Oh, he and scored he again! Scores. Are you kidding me? Sansone, a hat trick. He scored the last two goals for the Minutemen, and they were the they were the most key ones of the game so far. Pulls within one, 11 to 10 with 2.55 left in the third. The big lefty attackman as described by his dad. Incredible stuff we are seeing here tonight. Oh, I'm sorry, that was actually Justin Beinfer on the score there. So that's gonna be his fifth of the game, ladies and gentlemen. So Justin Beinfer, the rocket, well, even though that it was attributed to Sansone, I guess you could say the same for Bime for there as he took that into his own hands. The unassisted goal as now it is Mendham down one, 11 to 10 to St. Peter's. Oh, flag, flag down. down. Mendham's got the ball. Oh, man, but that's going to be on Mendham. So they were a man up, and now they're going to be a man down. Man, we're having fun. <laughs> I'll tell you what's not going to be fun. Let's get back to the car. That's gonna, <laughs> it's not going to be fun. Um, we, need a, we need a squeegee yeah, here so yeah, we exactly. can see out the window. There's actually paper towels there, but, well, but we can't really reach out of it. <laughs> we don't, I don't even want to put my hand out there. It's going to come in all soaking wet. There's wires in front of us. We're, we don't want to mess up you the production. We don't want to electrocute the announcers. No, exactly, no. I know some people may not like us, but don't go that far, you know. <laughs> Was it the Trent Tucker reference? No, it's, it? no it's probably my I Can't Stand the Rain uh, reference. <laughs> I'll take full responsibility. <laughs> the, Out of Houston, the, the Houston Oilers reference. Who, no, that was fine. That was fine. That was, that was perfect. 
You know who quarterbacked the Bills to that comeback? Uh, not Jim Kelly. It was not. Yeah, he Frank was hurt. Reich. It's funny job, how Ryan. funny how he guides. I knew at least I knew it was not Jim Kelly. <laughs> oh, tries to maneuver his way into the. Oh, he scores! Right into the cage. Let's see who it was when he comes out of the huddle. At least we could see it on the replay. St. Peter scores, makes it 12 to 10. And that's going to be Christian De Rocco, his second, his second goal of the game off the assist from the midi Owen Mats. 12 to 10, St. Peter's. Mendham scratching and clawing to try to tie this game up, but it seems as if that every single time they try to get their St. Peter's, they score, and they just yeah, did they, to make it 12 to 10. They keep closer. They keep inching closer. And we still got a whole quarter left to play after this is over with uh, 2.24 left in the third. Another win by Dylan Hakes. He's been a master at these all game long for the Minutemen. Sub comes on, it's Matt LaRosa you saw there at the bottom of your screen. In exits Trinkoff. Being worked on by number by number uh, 15, Butcher. Now Beimford, he had that goal earlier. Being very patient with it. Wraparound attempt, got cut off. Oh, it spins, La Rosa, the shot scores! Back to a one goal game. 12 to 11, Matt LaRosa, his first goal of the game, his fourth of the year, probably the most important goal he'll score this year at this point, as they pull within one of St. Peter's prep with 139 remaining in the third quarter here. At this rate, the, the, the rain is pouring and so are the points. This is a standard score for a game at the end of regulation, but we still got a whole quarter left to play, 12 to 11. It is a high scoring game considering the weather conditions. Oh yes. Face off in the center. It's going to be Hakes again. And he'll be against Owen Matz of St. Peter's. Hops Hakes it won again. it again. It's a fast break. Hakes the shot. Oh, goes wide. That would have tied it. Mendham retains possession, has a chance to tie it up. That would have been his third goal of the year and probably the biggest goal of that young, uh, young, young man's uh, first year so far. But play resets after the Aaron shot. And Mendham's going to pass it around the perimeter as is standard and wait for the best shot that they can get. Oh, try to get it to trick off. Can he push it in, Bo? Could not. But he, he gets, gets it back, though. Mendham still has the ball after that cross the cage feed. Out of Almost bounds. Worked. Off the shot by Dylan Hakes. That's the second one he's Mendham's put wide. Mendham's keeping the ball. Good job maintaining possession here. That was the key to their end of half possession, a, a few possessions earlier. This they've, they've really, really, whoever put some, whoever talked to at halftime did a really, really good oh, job of the adjustment. There's a giveaway. And that's the giveaway off the, bless you, to whoever sneezed in the boot. <laughs> so the errand pass there by Trinkoff results in a loss of possession with 59.3 seconds left in the third quarter. We saw a score at the end of the, bless you, we uh, saw a score at the end of the uh, first half as Mendham was trying to come back. Will we see the same from St. Peter's? Let's see if we do. Bless you again. I know it's, it's allergy season over here. Made worse by this weather. Here's Bristol with it for the, for the Marauders. Bless you. <laughs> Looks like they're gonna hold here and try to get a, a shot off uh, at the end of the quarter. It worked for them in the... Don't want to give Mendham any, any time if they uh, lose possession. McDonough. Oh, great pass in front. Goes too wide here. But it's going to be scooped up by Della Rocco. Oh, tried to bounce it over there. And what do we have? I believe that's an offsides call or... Bless you. Yeah, looks that way. Offsides. Somebody stepped over. We could not see who it, uh, who it was because two, uh, both the men and the St. Peter's player were there. Oh, that 
That was with possession, so um, St. Peter's will be man up. Oh, boy. Yeah, there was now a Are they going to try to get a shot off? Are they going to hold it? Brendan Jones is the... I think they're going to they're gonna hold it. Brendan Jones was the perpetrator there. They don't put a shot up. They'll and be man up as we head quarter. into the final quarter of action, the goals can't stop coming. We can't stop our excitement, and this guy can't stop sneezing. But either way, we are... <laughs> We roll on to the final quarter, uh, final 12 minutes of action here. 12 to 11, St. Peter's Prep with a lead over Mendham. For those of you that have just joined us, they were down eight to nothing were Mendham at one point. They have pulled it to 12 to 11. Can't wait for this final quarter of action, but first off, word from our sponsors, Prospects Baseball and Softball Academy. And Men of Lacrosse would like to thank their sponsors for tonight, tonight, including platinum and gold sponsors, such as Robert Stoll's House Purchasing Group, LLC, the Reagan Family, the Trinkoff Wattic Group of Bank of America and Merrill Lynch, the Weeks Family, Top Safety Products, Bailey Funeral Home, Chester Bagel, and the Salerno Duane Auto Group. And Gizzy Productions, video production and photography. If you want anything filmed or, or photographed from weddings, sports, commercials, product media, live streaming, or drone footage, Gizzy is the man for you. Call 973-919-7055 or visit them at their website, gizzyproductions.com. All right, folks. We are in the nitty-gritty of things here. All right, we've talked about what you would say at certain scenarios in the game. Now we are at a one-goal game in the final quarter. Tell them what you'd tell your team if you were both. Well, again, the gap keeps narrowing, so this is uh, essentially a 0-0 zero -zero game. Yeah. And uh, the, that's it. Whoever wins the quarter is going to win the game. That's a good way to look at things. Every quarter is 0-0. Zero -zero. Well, that's, it's you slow. Wanna... You know, Mendham's been slowly nibbling away and uh, keeps narrowing the gap. Even even when St. Peter scores one, then they come back and score two before uh, before St. Peter scores again. It's That's been happening since it was 8 nothing. so. Um, and the rain continues to pour down. It hasn't, it hasn't, hasn't stopped. It was, it was, uh, it got a little squall and then it turned on and off and on and off, but now it has been consistent downpour ever since about midway through the second quarter. So here we go. We are back on the original sides that we were at the beginning of the game. St. Peter starts the final quarter of action up one and with the ball. And man up. And man up after that penalty. And it's going back to Mendham. Oh, oh tried to say, oh nice man. Nice effort. The wet field gave him an extra three feet or so on the slide, I think. Yeah, that was uh, Jack Dillon, the senior attack out of Jersey City. He's a hometown boy for St. Peter's Prep. Could not get that save though. Thought that, the, again, that the wet turf would give him a little, couple inches, but did not work. Kervik stays on his feet Long after the pressure. Gets, uh, timeout. Yep, timeout. That's a, probably a good call. You yeah. Get a, you get a long pull down that close to the goal, they usually take a bad shot just because they don't have many opportunities. So give his guys a chance to regroup. And they've actually been incredibly successful in those scenarios where they where they are able to regroup and right out of the gate have possession because then they can set up their guys and they can have if a shot goes out of bounds they'll have a guy close to the line very strategic approach to this comeback here by Mendham and hasn't been very you know shoot 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 it's been wait for an opportunity then shoot it's been working out very well for them 12 to 11 now. getting some messages here from upper management apparently they're very pleased with our work tonight oh Ryan. very very nice very nice upper management that's a very nice way, way of putting it making, making me feel all special <laughs> yeah, that's just george watching at his house pretty much okay <laughs> george george muha enjoying it from the comfort of his own home again we thank him so much for for getting us the gig here tonight because we're, we're seeing a great game we what thought are you, it was what good. are you getting paid ryan it's 12 to 11, uh, St. Peter's Prep uh, against uh, Mendham. 11.30 left in the final quarter. What a game this has turned into. Thought it was getting away from us at the beginning, but it has turned into a great action-packed latter half of this, of, this, of this game here tonight. 
believe the run right now for Mendham is up to 11 to 4 and to mount this comeback. We are back underway. Still tough to see. Yeah, Riccardi, I believe, has it. Over. These kids must be able to see a lot better than we can. Yes, exactly. Well, they're playing. It's We're tough calling. From up here. Their jobs are more important than ours at this point. <laughs> Here's LaRosa with it. Gets it over to Dylan Hakes, who just came off the bench. Back over to Sansone. To Trinkoff. That was Riccardi with it. Around and around and around the passes go. When they will shoot, only they know. You start, start seeing uh, water coming off the sticks every time someone catches the ball. Riccardi to Beimfer. Beimfer tries to maneuver in. Here's the shot by Riccardi, scores! We are tied. We are tied. 12 to 12. 10 36 left in the fourth. An incredible comeback by Mendham to tie the game down eight to nothing. Now tied up 12 to 12 off the rocket by Riccardi as he was falling to the ground on the on the wet surface. Now we truly have a 0-0 game with 10 10 27 to go. 10 well, no, 10 30 no, 10 36. Yeah, a little discrepancy there. on the clock here. 10 36 on the official clock. Yes. Yeah, 1036 in the official clock. We'll get to we'll get to that in a second. But this, yeah, these fans here got a woman in front of us and on her umbrella shaking. You know she's excited there. We can't see her, can't see her face, but she's. Uh. So are we in here? This is great stuff here we we're go. seeing. Ten minutes to win it. Hakes, Mendham gets another face off. Clearly, the the difference between the uh, start of this game and what happens. Uh, up till now has, has been the domination of the face-offs by Mendham. Here's La Rosa. Over to Sansone. Cross field, back to Sansone and X. La Rosa on the near side, walking around with it. Being very patient. They can be this now for, they could be completely patient for the first time all game because now, like you said, 0-0 zero, zero basically. 12 no shot clock in high school. They can uh, hold the ball as long as they want. Riccardi. Over to Hakes. Passing it around. Feigns the pass. Beimfer wanted to get Trink off, but a defender was there to stop him. So they reset and pass it around the perimeter again. Trink off in front. Oh, came off the stick. However, saved by Sansone. He's been coming in clutch with those saves from potential uh, passes that could have gone out of play. It's hard to believe, Ryan, but uh, Mendham is looking for the lead here. Yes, it was unthinkable just about an hour and a half ago that they would even be back in this game in any stretch of the imagination. But lo and behold, they have. Here's Bime for an X. The two number 24s going at it. He's working against Hendrik Mueller. Uh, uh, oh, shot in front, save. It, that hit the net, but I think it hit the outside. It did hit the net. For a second, everyone thought it might have went in, and we're going to get a flag on Mendham. And that is not it's what they need. going to be a man up for St. Peter's. And this is going to be a delayed penalty, so if they get a score, this could be a two-goal swing later on. Oh, a high pass. Could not get corralled in by uh, Colin Williams, who's been quiet ever since the beginning of the game, but even he has four goals. So thankfully for Mendham, no goal given up there, but still a man up advantage as St. Peter's Saint is attacking with eight and a half left to, to Saint go. St. Peter's looking to take the lead back, something they've had the entire game except for the last minute or so. Little confusion here by the officials. What are they discussing here? I'm not sure. Here we go. Well, doesn't matter now. Neither here nor there. Here we go. Dylan. Oh, the pass attempt there was to... Uh, We're even. 
Yeah, could not see who it was. Yeah, not we're sure even now. Happened. They kill it off, and we're back to even strength. We have a whistle. Tensions uh, flaring a little bit here with coaches and fans and officials. Now, what was the stoppage in play for? I see no flag down. No, I heard someone yelling something about a flag. Let's see if we can uh, hear or monitor. see what the officials have to say. Is that a Mendham penalty? I believe that is a Mendham penalty as Colin Uvino has come off and he is in the box right now. Did he, did he go on the field too early potentially? That seemed like an awfully short uh, time until he was released. There's definitely some confusion. But whatever happened, Yavino was the perpetrator, and he is currently in the box. I'm st still not sure they have it sorted out. Thirty seconds back on the clock is what they are requesting now. I'm guessing that they should have given the flag earlier, so they are doing a retroactive penalty call as Uvino is off and and right after and man up that I was think killed. I there was uh, so something not right with that first penalty and uh, they're trying to <laughs> trying to correct it somehow. Yeah, there we go, 30 seconds have been put back on the clock, so yes, a retroactive penalty call as they just killed it. They just killed a penalty, and now they're back on the penalty. Yeah, but that was a way, way too short a time until, uh, until the man came back on. I think something was not right. Okay, so they so did not kill the penalty. We're ready to go now. They, so they did not kill the penalty, so they let St. him off Peter's too early. St. Peter's man up. They've got a, a guy at X to, to pull one guy back there. They're Shot! Ah. Score! I said that Colin Williams was quiet earlier. But he makes a loud statement right there. Makes it 13 to 12 with 8.23 left in regulation. St. Peter's pulled a, uh, pulled a man uh, back to X to occupy a Mendham defender and played five on four up top. That's his fifth goal of the game. The sophomore is making million dollar moves in this game. St. Peter's back in the lead as they have been for most of the game. And uh, Uvino is back on. So we have even strength. 8.23 to go. And face Another face-off win for Mendham. Hakes. Up there to Colin Uvino, who was in the box earlier. After that confusion from the referees, that ultimately resulted in a St. Peter's prep goal. That put them in the lead by one right now. Eight, uh, 11, sorry, uh, 13 to 12. San, uh, Sansone straddles with it. Trying to work his way around. Possible wraparound shot attempt was blocked away. Oh, good job by Menon to get the ball back there. That's Trinkoff that saved it. Sansone, shot, save! Poor angle on that shot. Beimfer was giving chase, so Menon keeps it. 7.46 left. Here's Sansone, Riccardi. It is raining. The, this is the hardest it's rained all game. I'll go as far as saying How many that. times have we said that? I, yeah, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And we're dry, but that's not going to be for long at about 7, unless this thing goes to overtime, obviously. But at some point, we're going to have to leave, and we're going to have to get all wet. <laughs> Sansone. Tries to force his way in. Muscles his oh! way in. Scores. 
The physicality pays dividends. Kevin Sansone has come alive in this comeback attempt. His fourth goal of the game. He just muscles his way in here, muscles and muscles and muscles till he's close enough to shoot. That's like Yao Ming in the post, imposing his will on the defender. As we tie the game up, 13 to 13 with 7.01 left in regulation. Buggle up folks, we are in for an exciting final seven minutes of action. And the Mendham Bench trying to pump up the crowd. Made of the parents and also the students that have braved the elements, which I am incredibly impressed with, by the way. Yes, they, they should have a GPA increase. For oh, us. yes, exactly. Extra credit on their next assignment, definitely, for making it this far into this game, especially with no umbrellas to cover their heads. Oh, he really straddled that out-of-bounds line there, uh, did Dylan Hakes, but keeps it in. Sansone with it, working against and Henrik Mendem Müller. again trying to get the lead for the first time. They've come so close so many times before. Can they come through for their first lead in the game on this possession here as we come under six minutes and 30 seconds? Hakes over to Bime for back to Hakes. In front, the shot, and score! Mendham has the lead for the first time tonight. What a shot! And guess who? It's Kevin Sansone! Right there in front, point blank. And Mendham has a one point lead. For the first time in the game, it's 14 to 13, Mendham. Down eight to nothing. At one point in the game, in the second quarter, they have come back. A 14 to five run and goal scored. And with six point and si with six minutes and 17 seconds left in regulation, Mendham has their first lead of the evening. What a night for lacrosse here in Mendham. Now, if you're St. Peter's, you're finally, oh, but wait, face off win for Dylan Hakes again. Shot, score, oh, unbelievable. Riccardi, that play happened before. In the second quarter when they scored off a face-off win by Hakes, and it works again. Riccardi scores, and Mendham with an unprecedented, considering the circumstances, two-goal lead. I don't know what team we were watching in the first quarter. No idea. What game we were watching, but uh, St. Peter's is deflated. Riccardi's got a hat trick. There's so many hat tricks, I can't even count them on my two hands in this game. An offensive juggernaut from both sides, but the story of the night is St. Peter's up eight to nothing, now down 15 to 13. If you are Coach Greg Morrissey, you are finally on the true defensive for the first time in the game. What would you tell your players right now? Well, the, the biggest issue is mental right now. They're, they're flat and deflated and, and rightfully so after after getting, uh, you know, having that lead and losing it. And uh, you, you got to you gotta wake back up. That's the first thing. This, this isn't about uh, X's and O's right now. This is about just scoring goals at this point, <laughs> especially with, with the amount of time they have left, 547. And keep in mind, Mendham has done a very good job of wasting time in their attacking zone. Well, now they really should begin to waste time. Exactly. Now, now they should sit on it as much as they can. You could kill half of this uh, just passing the ball around here. And that's where a lot of like critics And it's a like, two-goal lead, uh, so even if yeah. you give up one. You're still, you're still up one. And that's, the, and that's where a lot of critics of high school sports come in. Lacrosse, basketball, no shot clock. There was an. I'm not a fan of the shot clock. And lacrosse is a fast sport to begin with, and uh, I think it takes away the opportunity, especially for, for oh, teams oh, that are. Oh gosh, almighty! Oh, that goes flying into the stands. Uh, did that, thankfully, that didn't go in the stands, but it certainly may have hit the uh, statue that uh, overlooks the stadium over there. The shot clock takes away the opportunity for uh, overmatched teams to to try to control possession. I think lacrosse is a fast enough sport as it is. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I mean, at, the, at that point, the games would be. I mean, you see, this game tonight is 15 to 13. By your estimation, if there was a shot clock, what do you think the score would be? Uh, probably potentially oh. less, because I, th I think, uh, judging by how this game has been going, uh, both of these teams would have been forced into a lot of bad shots. Speaking of shots, that one went wide by Trinkoff. That would have made it a three-point lead for Mendham. We come up on four and a half minutes 
left in regulation. Mendham a two goal lead, 15 to 13 over St. Peter's. Something that in our wildest dreams, we never thought that we would say. And, this, and the same can be said for St. Peter's. However, it's in their wildest nightmare. It'll be a long ride back to Jersey City in this weather. Indeed. La Rosa back to Trinkoff. Trinkoff gets it again. several of those long rides back to Jersey City 20 years ago. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to bring that, that memory for you. <laughs> they are holding it. And in front, the ball's still loose. Still loose. Who's going to get it? Goalie's got the ball. Nope. Yes, goalie's got the ball. Yes, Liam Brown with it. That's the first time he's we touched it. We are down the... to 344. Yes. Oh, great outlet pass there. That's the first time that Liam Brown has touched the touched the ball basically Still all quarter Mendo. long. Mendo was off sides there. Yep, there's the flag. Yep. St. Peter's is going to get a man up here. Oh, that may be just what they need here. Little good hustle out of uh, Mendham to try to stop that clear, but uh, didn't pull it back quick enough. And if they score here, they'll have a possession one man up. It's a nice look inside and a nice check. And... And we should be stopping any second now. Yep, yes. play stopped. No, play still going. No Mendham player Waiting had clear through. possession of the ball yet. And yeah. now they stop. Ball goes to St. Peter's, but uh, it's irrelevant as, as there's a penalty. That has happened, think, that has happened yeah. before where in, in this game for, for against Mendham where they were a man up, and then right before the whistle blew on the delay, they score, and then they come back and score again. And but I, that I was that was during that stretch where it was eight to nothing and ten to ten to three. But now, yeah. fifteen to thirteen. And I think it's time to say it's raining harder than it has again. How many times have we said that? Anybody keeping count? Please, please say it. This is this is great. Biblical at this point. Yes, this is it's always of biblical proportions. <laughs> The downpour. I'm waiting to see a wooden arc with animals going two by two. I think we're in the arc. Oh, yes, we are. We're safe. <laughs> At least we're safe for the time being. Feels like it's been a, been a minute since I've said the names of the St. Peter's players because Mendham has been Look at the, imposing the their will. coming off of those sticks when they're catching the ball. Oh, yeah. It is bad out there, folks. Colin Williams. Inside. Oh, try to get it to Andrew. But too far ahead of his stick. 30 to play. Two minutes, 30 seconds. St. Peter's retains possession. Oh, great block there by La Rosa. McDonough has it again. Sorry, that, that was not La Rosa on the block. That was number 42, Colby Morales. And the penalty is released. We are back at even strength. Much to the relief of the Minutemen. Andrew Williams with it. Working against La Rosa. And a timeout call. Timeout. With 1.56 left in the game. They got to score quick. Yes. They got to get two. And the way these faceoffs have been going, even if they get one, they're not getting the ball back. Yes. Dylan Hakes has been the unsung hero of this game thus far. No goals on the board, but he has either directly or indir indirectly led to many that have been scored in the midst of this comeback. He has improved this offense since day one, according to Coach Michael Smith, and is an incredible face-off guy. And when in games like this, it comes down to the fundamentals, even as simple as a face-off. And that is what we have seen tonight. Dylan Hakes, with those great stick skills at midfield, has he's, really he's winning been it himself. Catalyst. He's winning a lot of them himself. Yes. Scooping up the ground ball on his own, doing it all by himself. And now with 156 left in the game, Mendham. Probably with This is a tough loss for St. Peter's if they don't come yeah, back. Yes, exactly. We were keep in mind in the third quarter we were talking about who the quarterback was when the Houston Oilers <laughs> blew the lead against the Buffalo Bills. We, did, we thought we'd be talking about that for the whole rest of the game. I, I was looking forward then, to some football then, talk. <laughs> but, then, but then something even better happened. Reality <laughs> happened, and we have what we have here right now. Frank Reich, for those that didn't get it the first <laughs> time. And, and also Frank Tucker. Ted, Trent Tucker. Trent Tucker. Thank you. <laughs> the point one rule. I've actually seen that before. Yeah, he held on to that ball for like what would be like half a, half a second today. 
So I did get the reference, I just didn't know his name. <laughs> Well, Ryan, this has been a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Been a thank you. Professional. Thank you very much. I'm glad it. I'm glad it turned out this way. We got to show our stuff. <laughs> Fifteen to thirteen. One fifty-six left in the game. Can Mendham hold St. Peter's? Let's see. Here's Dylan with it. Bobby McDonough uh, over the head of Dylan, game. and that's Mendham ball. Looks that's like, costly. Looks like St. Peter's was trying to run a play, which is is probably if you got a play in your back pocket, that's the time to run it. But uh, weather and uh, lack of execution cost some possession, and Mendham's oh, got man. a chance to close it out now. The water that came off a of bind for a stick off the pass there from Sean Day was palpable. There's and a timeout, timeout called by Mendham. Mendham. Going to put their strategy into kill a minute 21. They've done it multiple times in this game, killing time to lead to a goal. But now they're just trying to kill time to kill time. And if they can do that, Mendham's going to walk out of here with a win, which is an incredible win to get them to 500 if they can keep this going. Look for uh, St. Peter's to pull their goalie out to uh, try and double the ball. And I believe that is exactly what they have done. So St. Peter's has pulled the goalie. And as we resume action, we are at 70 seconds left in regulation. Mendham with a two goal lead, trying to keep this away from St. Peter's to maintain it. Goalie's creeping out, looking for someone to pick up. As soon as he picks somebody up, they'll double the ball. Goal is open. St. Peter's cannot get the double team on. Mendham doing a good job playing keep away right now. They got to do it for 41 more seconds. La Rosa being double teamed. And a flag, flag down. is down. It's on St. That Peter's. Will do it. Yeah, that's going to do it, folks. But Mendham's going to keep the ball. They Hold don't care about the, the penalty. <laughs> Another one. Another down. one. That's the icing on the cake. 19.6 seconds to go. Two flags in a matter of seconds on St. Peter's. That's going to bring two men off. And that's it, folks. Mendham is going to hold on by a miracle comeback. 15 to 13. Well, unless they score on an empty netter here, but I'm pretty sure they're going to put the, yep, the other goalie back in there. Yeah, that would... Uh... That would be not the smartest decision if they were to keep the goalie out. So Liam. No, and Men Mendham should be holding the ball also. Would not yeah, be exactly. Good sportsmanship exactly. to try to yeah, score we've in this situation. We've seen that happen uh, with a St. Joe's Pope John game a couple years ago in football. They tried to run up the score, and, well, if you want to see the video, Google it. We're not going to discuss it here. But, man, what a game. De there's Dylan Hakes right there. You saw that guy may be the player of the game on contributions to the team as a whole. Those face-off wins that he has had. Face-offs and ground balls it, makes a huge yes. difference. It's and like it being, did. Being an offensive lineman in football. One of the more important positions, but one of the more unsung positions that, you know, when you, when you, when you get the Pro Bowl nominations, people always pay attention to who made the Pro Bowl as a quarterback, who made the Pro Bowl as a wide receiver. No one cares about the offensive lineman. You know, hashtag lineman. Our people, too. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Were you a lineman? I was. <laughs> Perfect. In my football days, yes. Yeah, so there's still some confusion, I think, about who's, who's off and who's on. But everything's That's sorted out. It's going to matter very shortly. Yep. We are at 12 coming up. Should on be quite a celebration for oh, them yeah. here. And they, they earned it. Counting it down. They're and Mendham. That's it. Down eight to nothing in the first half. Scores on a 15 to five run to win this game against St. Peter's Prep by a score of 15 to 13. What a night of action here in Mendham.
And what a victory for the Minutemen to get them to 500 on the year. And it certainly was not easy whatsoever. The pattern continues, trading wins and losses. It was supposed to be a win tonight, and they came through, and they, they made sure that the pattern continued. Everything I said about statistics, throw it out the window. You were right. Yeah. <laughs> so now place your money on your master's bet, right? Yeah, no, I, I didn't, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, Okay, so we are going to be doing interviews. We are not going to be out there. We're going to be bringing them in here. We're going to bring a couple Mendham players in here to get their thoughts on probably one is the, what is one of the bigger wins of their varsity career, at least one of the more miraculous. But, Joe, thank you so much thank for joining me tonight. Much. It was an honor, was and great. it was so much fun. Trent Tucker, Frank Wright, and all that other stuff. We appreciate your contributions. I hope, we can do it. I hope we can do it again. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. And we will be right back. I'll be in the booth, and I'll be interviewing some men and players uh, with their thoughts on tonight's win. Ryan Sudo for Joe, Pomp for Joe DiPompeo. We will be right back. I actually got to see some medicine at a very young age through some special circumstances. My uncle was a nurse anesthetist, so I got to um, see some surgical center, both outpatient and uh, kind of front office billing from shadowing from when I was in middle school even. I enjoyed taking care of uh, athletes, getting them back to the pursuits that they like to, uh, like to do in their free time and professionally. I mean, the thing that definitely struck me from the day I started working here was really the atmosphere of uh, providing comprehensive patient care in a very uh, friendly environment, very professional, and uh, certainly I think the biggest thing for patients that I've been seeing is the ability to have, you know, com comprehensive musculoskeletal care under one group's heading. And I think that the uh, kind of width and breadth of our practice allows us to really take care of patients efficiently, quickly, get them back to doing the things that they like to do. I've always wanted to help people and growing up, I knew I wanted to be in a medical field. One thing that makes me proud of the practice is that we all truly care for our patients. We're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, we don't mind if, if our patients call us and we actually want our patients to be comfortable to treat us like their family as like we treat them as our family. I love sports, I love basketball, I love um, you know, running with my wife. We know at the end of the day with positivity and hard work where we can get the athlete back to the sport they want to they want to get back to. We at More Sussex Sports want to honor every athlete, no matter if it's JV, varsity, freshman, or the star of the team, or someone who barely gets playing time. Everybody deserves the recognition that they get for every single bit of hard work that they put in, season in, and season out for their sports and their school. So that's why we came up with the 2018-2019 More Sussex Sports trading cards as a way to recognize these athletes and to memorialize the 2018-2019 More Sussex Sports season. So. How do you get your trading card? Well, if you make a small $17 donation, we will create a custom trading card for you or your favorite athlete that will be posted on our trading cards page and individually on our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook pages. And on the trading cards, we'll also link it to your huddle page, recruiting profile, or social media account. So, why are we asking you for donations? Well, though more Sussex Sports is free to the public, meaning that it's free to watch any of our live broadcasts, listen to our podcasts, read our articles, etc., there are a lot of costs that go into making all the best content for you. So by buying a trading card for either you or your favorite athlete, you are not only doing them a service, you are doing us a service by helping us bring even more of the best coverage of Morris and Sussex High School sports than there ever can be. I actually got to see some medicine at a very young age through some special circumstances. My uncle was a nurse anesthetist, so I got to um, see some surgical center, both outpatient and uh, kind of front office billing from shadowing from when I was in middle school even. I enjoyed taking care of uh, athletes, getting them back to the pursuits that they like to, uh, like to do in their free time and professionally. I mean, the thing that definitely struck me from the day I started working here was really the atmosphere of uh, providing comprehensive patient care in a very uh, friendly environment, very professional, and uh, certainly I think the biggest thing for patients that I've been seeing is the ability to have, you know, com comprehensive musculoskeletal care under one group's heading. And I think that the uh, kind of width and breadth of our practice allows us to really take care of patients efficiently, quickly, get them back to doing the things that they like to do.
This is Prospects Baseball and Softball Academy in Randolph, New Jersey. This is your source for the best one-on-one -on -one professional hitting, pitching, fielding, catching, and game IQ in all of Morris Sussex. Call them now at 973-970-9102 or visit them at 11 Middlebury Boulevard in Randolph, New Jersey. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. Russ's Rules for Athletics in School. If you want to play sports in college, don't think an online athletic profile is going to get you there. Online profiles can be great, but you need to get in the game, on the field, and off the field when it comes to athletic recruiting. Create a list of D1, D2, and D3 schools that you think are a good academic and athletic match, and then communicate with coaches with purpose and polite persistence. I'm Russ Vitale of Academic Resources, and remember, we are on your team. Call us on 973-292-0505 for all your athletic recruiting, test prep, and college advisement needs. Good luck out there and be safe. seconds one to Carrington she didn't get it off in time but she does put it down welcome to Morris Sussex sports the only place that covers high school sports in Morris Sussex and parts of Warren County while other news outlets are shutting their doors Morris Sussex sports continues to grow our content makes you feel good whether it's a video of that winning goal a photograph of that unbelievable moment, or a special interest story about hope, about love, about community. We have one of the best internship programs for high school and college age students. Welcome back to Mendham High School. What you just witnessed is a thriller of a game. You guys were down one to nothing, uh, nine to nothing. Came back, won 15 to 13. I'm here with freshman Dylan Hakes, probably one of the more unsung heroes of this game. Your face-off wins were key to a lot of the goals that were set up to lead up to the comeback. What do you think was the key tonight for you to do that? I think just uh, staying together as a team was probably the biggest thing. Yeah, is this the biggest? This is obviously the the best win of your career, your young career so far. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um. So like, what what I, nine nothing. What was going through your mind? What did coach say? Like, what was what was the overall morale when you guys were down that far? Did you guys think you could come back? Uh, well, we obviously didn't think we would come back. And then um, coach talked to us, and I don't know, something happened, and then we sparked, and then came back and won. Well, it's simple as that. Yep. So uh, what are you looking forward to for the rest of your freshman year, huh? Uh, just scoring goals, getting those stats up. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next up. Justin Beimfer, top freshman of the year of 2018 by NJ.com. And he's become one heck of a sophomore, as exemplified by his, uh, his five-goal performance tonight. He's out there waiting. We wanted him to close the door so he wasn't in the frame. All right, Justin, come on in. All right, Justin. If you could just hold it like this. Yeah. Okay. So you scored. One, two, three, five goals. <laughs> five goals for you tonight. You guys come back from nine to nothing. The biggest offensive contributor of the game for your team. What's going through your mind right now that you guys pulled that one off? I mean, we just stuck as a team. That's all we had to do the whole game. We just played as a team. And we finally, when I saw, we started winning face-offs, we started to click. And you see what happens when we click. Yeah, <laughs> I did. 
I did. Now, we, we alluded to this on the way over here when we were talking, uh, you know, the elements. You know, what do you – and now we, we noticed in the booth that, you know, when it started to rain, for some reason, that was when the comeback started. Did it have anything to do with anything? Do you guys just like playing in the rain or the elements? Is it, is it like a – We don't mind the weather. I mean, <laughs> rain probably got us pumped up, though. Right. <laughs> playing wet, Friday night lights, home crowd here. Probably the most fans of God ever. ever. Yeah, yeah. They stay – yeah, they have a lot – I give a lot of credit. Men defense for staying out, both Shout students out, and parents. Heck yeah. Hey, man, thank you so much, and good luck for the rest of the season. And uh, finally, Mr. Kevin Sansone, the source of the famous Where Grandma Hides the Cookies call. That is not mine, by the way. I stole that, but that was me a year ago. Hey, how you doing, Kev? <laughs> Hold that up to your, uh, to your mouth, please. Um, so you're, you're the captain. You come in tonight, multi-goal performance here tonight. Uh, you had five, five goals? Yeah, I think Five so. goals tied with Beimfer for the most goals in this game. You helped guide this comeback. Where does this rank in the most exciting wins of your, of your long varsity career at this point? Oh, this, I can think of uh, my sophomore year against Westmore Central. That might have been the closest to it, but this was the best comeback I've ever been a part of. Yeah, what do you, who, like, what do you think was the key to, to pulling this one uh, off? It was all around it. I mean, it's a team game. We had our freshman Hakes step up from yeah. the X, killed, killed the possession game, and that was huge for us in the second half. Our defense got it together, uh, started making stops and getting us the ball, and our offense took care of the rest. Yeah, you know what the most incredible part is? Your eye black stayed on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's some sturdy stuff, man. Hey, and thank you yeah. so much for coming in. Absolutely. And uh, thanks to all of you for watching. We thought it was going to get away from us. We thought we were going to be talking about football for the, for the rest of the game. <laughs> but it turned out to, uh, to be a great game. Mendham yeah. wins 15-13 to 13 over St. Peter's Prep. For Kevin Sanson, Justin Bynum, for Dylan Hakes, and my broadcast partner, Jody Pompeo, I've been Ryan Sudol saying so long from Mendham. Stay dry. Thanks, guys.